Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Queen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Keen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage, and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Guild Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. I love baseball. Baseball, baseball. 94.5 The Peak presents Wasatch Wasp Baseball on the Mid Utah Radio Sports Network. Hey! This broadcast is powered by Guild Mortgage, Dairy King, CarQuest Auto Parts, Physical at the Fit Stop, Wasatch Back Flooring, Napa Wasatch Auto Parts, Heber City Point S, Dorius Dental, and Bank of Utah. Baseball. The guy on first. Who? The first baseball. Who? The guy playing Who is on first? I'm asking you. Now let's go live to the Diamond for play-by-play coverage of Wasatch Wasp Baseball on 94.5 The Peak. Good afternoon and welcome to the ballpark. Tyler Baird here with Tyler Moss live from Wasatch High School this afternoon as the Wasatch Wasps are looking to end their winning losing streak as they set to take on the number one team in 5A, the Orem Tigers. Tyler's not going to be an easy task. Orem Tigers, number one in 5A, 12 and 2 on the season. And it was a rough game on Friday when these two teams played in game one of this two game series. What can Wasatch do to get back in the winning ways against a very, very good Orem team? You're spot on that it's not going to be an easy one, Tyler. Wasatch is going to be going up against Miller on the mound of Orem. He has five wins on the season already, 5-0 and on the year, has a complete game to go with that. He's probably their best statistical pitcher on the mound, and that's following up Davies, who went 90-plus on the mound last time, Tyler. So really, really pretty impressive guy here. So Wasatch is going to need to be competitive in the box and again, hunt for those fastballs and try to just cause some havoc when you get on the base pass. But Tyler, going to sound like a broken record. It's really pretty simple as far as you don't have a chance if you don't play clean. That's what we have to do is Wasatch has to play good. I just got from our uh, down on the field sources that Miller is actually a BYU commit. The kid that they faced on Friday, Davies, is an ASU commit, Ty, so a couple of D1 pitchers that Wasatch is facing in the series, which is why Coach Carl Hermanson has Orem as the number one team in the state. It's nice when you have a couple of D1 arms. Yeah, fun to say a couple Big 12 pitchers too, Tyler, right, with ASU moving over the Big 12 next year and see how long that lasts, you know, before we just have two conferences left. But seeing some good talent here. Wonder with Davies, Tyler, I, I really liked him on the mound. We were going over it in the game on the drive home. Only one hit out of the infield. Grant Mahoney, the only one that got a hit out of the infield. Wasatch had three other hits on the infield with little dribblers. Really impressive. But obviously Miller committed to BYU. He's going to be impressive today. Wasatch just has to play clean. That's, that's the name of the game. You've got to be absolutely clean on the field to compete against a good pitcher like Miller. Top of the first brought to you by the Dairy King. Since 1946, the Dairy King family has been serving your family for four generations to create a fun-filled atmosphere where quality food and family can come together. Your keys to the game that were brought to you earlier were brought to you by Dorius Dental, who offers no surprises of dental treatment. Dr. Dorius and Dr. Proctor let Dorius Dental make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriusDental.com. Watch that to be in their all white uniforms, or them in their gray pant and blue top uniforms. And Ty, go ahead and take us around the diamond for our Heber Appliance defensive starters. Well, your starting pitcher is going to be Carter Bacot as he delivers a first pitch strike here, Ty. Yeah, it's going to be elevated to center field. Zach Burdett goes over, makes the grab. One pitch, one away. And Wasatch put Bacot in in relief in the uh, game against Orem on Friday and quickly got him out of there in under 10 pitches. Tyler, for this exact reason, knowing he'd have Saturday and Sunday to rest, they wanted his arm to be at full strength. So he only threw a, a very minimum number 
number of pitches in that game on Friday. And Bukad's going to be your starter. He'll be throwing behind the dish, Tyler, to Christensen, who will be catching. At third base will be Micah Dahl. At shortstop will be Bridger Shaw as Bukad is on the mound, your regular shortstop. At second base will be Kyron Stocking. At first base will be Riker Evans. In left field for the Wasps today will be Crew Baxter. Center fielder who just made that out is Zach Burdett. And then in right field will be Blake Sweat. Defensive start is brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch em all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. Three, or that one's in there for a strike. Two one the count as it'll the batter will be the sophomore, or excuse me, the shortstop. Kai Burge, one home run, one triple, and six RBIs on the year. 2-1 count. Christensen sets up on the outside part of the plate. Too far outside. Moves the count to 3-1. This is a bit of a homecoming for the head coach of Orem High School. Coach Carl Hermanson was the head coach of Wasatch High School. His last season was the 2003 season. And that will be a base on balls. Only the fourth walk on the year for Carter Bukad, who comes in with six and two-thirds innings pitched. And hasn't given up an earned run. Seven Ks, now four walks, and has only given up one hit in that six and two-thirds innings of action. Yeah, when you look up and down the box scores, Tyler, and the stats for this Wasatch team, Carter Bukad is the best pitcher for Wasatch. I, I wouldn't say he's got the best stuff, Tyler, but he's just a competitor up there on the mound, and he's just going to throw strikes. He's going to be competitive in the zone, and he's the kind of guy you need on the mound if you're going to knock off the number one team in the state. Hitter's going to be Merrick Bostock and Ty in, the, in our pre-game pre meeting. You think this is one of the best players you've seen in the state this year, the Wasatch I State? I really like him, Tyler. Watching him run with the speed he has, it's it's next level. There's not a lot of players in the state of Utah that can run like Bostock. If he gets on the base pass, it's an automatic steal, Tyler. He's taking second no matter what. There's nothing you can do as a team to stop him. He is that fast, and any ball that's in the gap, Tyler, he's going to be standing up for a triple, if not being inside the park home run. Really like the way he plays. He's got pop. He's got speed. And a double play here, for example, Tyler Wasatch has to have a sharply hit ground ball and be completely clean. Otherwise, there's no chance to get this guy on a double play. Eight extra base hits on the year for Bostock. Three home runs, two doubles, and three, sorry, two triples and three doubles coming into the series. That one's in there for a strike. Moves the count to 1-1. One, one. one away here in the top of the first. Wasatch lost 10-1 to one on Friday to this Orem Tiger team who improved to 12-2. and two on the year. Currently sit atop the region standings with Maple Mountain and Salem Hills. We're all 3-0. and oh. Springville 2-1. and one. Spanish Fork 1-2. and two. And then Cedar Valley, Tinview, and Wasatch at the bottom of the standings at 0-3. Oh that region standings update brought to you by the Gordon Law Group, your full service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. 2-1 the count, one away. Carter comes set. Pickoff move, not in time. And shortstop Burge scampers back to first base. I think Carter was hoping to catch him bouncing, Tyler. When Burge gets his lead over at first base, he's kind of hoppy getting his lead out there. It's not a smooth glide. And if you can catch him on a hop there, you can definitely get him in a bad spot. And Carter was trying to get that timed up, but did not get the right move to get it timed up. 3-1 the count. Is that what misses low and away? Carter, big deep breath, working out of the stretch here. To the third baseman today. Bostock played left field on Friday. Now moves to third base today. One out, one guy on, 3-1 the count, the pitch. That one's in there for a strike right at Dahl. Dahl can't catch it, knocks it down, throws it to second base. No, he throws it into right field. Nobody is going to get out on this one. Runner will advance from first to third on the air from Dahl at third base. Ty, that's a hooking line drive. It's a tough play for a third baseman as that ball's coming in, handcuffing him on the glove, and it went down spinning towards the turf. Dahl did a good job of tracking it, Tyler, but didn't turn over the glove because it appeared to be up above the waist on the line drive. And so rather than get the glove turned over, catching it off the dirt, he tried to go down with it and trap it. The ball hit the turf, and then in a rush to try to turn the double play, he throws it into right field. It's a tough play for a third baseman to make, but it will go down as an air. First and third, one out. P hitter is going to be the pitcher, Miller. Has a home run, six doubles coming into the series. Also had 12 RBIs coming into the series. Pitches up for ball one. Double play depth up the middle for Wasatch. Kyron Stocking getting his first start at second base today with Bukad on the mound. Runner does not go. The off-speed pitch also misses high. Moves count to 2-0. Watching Carter's reaction on that, Tyler. Up from the booth, that one looked pretty good from here. Going to be a low zone if that's not going to be called a strike today. 2-0 to count. Outfield playing somewhat shallow with the wind and a slight breeze coming in from center field into home plate. 
Benefits of the turf here, Ty. Wasatch and Heber City getting rain most of the day today. Not affecting the turf. Slide step delivery. That one's in there at the belt for strike one. Two on the count. Wasatch on a six game slide, trying to get back into the winning column. Runner. He thought he had it timed up. That ball's going to get away on a swing and a miss. And the leading runner will come in to score and give Orem the 1-0 lead. Also, the runner at first base will advance to second base. 2-2 two -two the count, 1-0 the score for Orem. Ty, that was an interesting sequence. Obviously, catching that ball is, is something that you need to have happen if you're Wasatch. Another unforced error. Two in the inning already for Wasatch, and they're now down 1-0. But if you notice, Coach Carl Hermanson for Orem with a guy with speed and bow stock on the bases. He did not send him right away, Tyler. This one's going to be elevated to foul territory. Carter Bucod calling everybody off. Makes the grab in foul territory. Runner will go back to second base. Two away. So just to finish that thought, it's, it gets different activity for the hitter, right? If Bostock goes and opens up that base for Miller, one of your better hitters at number four, he may not get the same pitches. So it's interesting that Coach Hermanson, with his fastest runner, who's easily able to second base on a first and third situation, held him at first base for the first four pitches to try to get Miller a little bit better pitch to hit. Miller didn't cash in, just flying out there, but an interesting strategy to look at. It'll bring up the pitcher from Friday, Easton Davies, coming into this series. Seven extra base hits, 24 RBIs on the year for Davies. He'll take ball one, and Bostock will swipe third base easily without a throw down. So 1-0 the count, guy on third. Orem already leading 1-0 with two away. God's going to go back to the windup. That one misses high and outside for ball two. 2-0 the count. Well, you got some bases open if you're Carter. Don't have to give in here. That one's in there for a strike. Moves the count to 2-1. Two, two, and what I mean by that, I'm not saying necessarily intentionally walk, Tyler, but in an obvious fastball count there, 2-1, and one, you don't have to go fastball there with a base or two open. 2-0, two -oh, tries to go back inside, misses inside, moves the count to 3-1. on the count, the pitch. That one's going to be a, an off-speed pitch that jams Miller, or excuse me, Davies. That'll go foul, moves the count to full with two away. 3-2 the count. Carter takes deep breath, delivers. The payoff pitch goes back to the off-speed, and that one misses inside for ball four. Second walk of the inning for Wasatch. Ty, that was pretty close. Davies was backing out, did not see that curveball well. Backed off of the plate like it was a fastball coming to hit him. That ball broke back in, but couldn't get enough. Davies was already leaning out of the back of the box. Carter nearly rung him up. So runners on first and third, two away with a one-run lead, and that'll bring up Landon Nix, the center fielder. Coming into the series, had three doubles and two RBIs. In the game on Friday, Nix had himself a pretty decent day. Had a hit by pitch, a couple of singles and walks, so reached base every time. Pickoff move, not in time, over to Davies, who will be playing left field today after pitching on Friday. Carter back working out of the stretch with the runner on first. Davies takes some steps, and the pitch just outside for ball one. Man, tight zone today from the umpire. Yeah, and Orem, after swinging at the first pitch of the game, Tyler, they've been really picky and disciplined in the box, making this inning a lot harder for Carter than you'd like to see already, up to 23 pitches. That one just outside, moves the count to 2-0. A couple times, Tyler, Carter's glanced over to the dugout after pitches, and he's usually pretty emotionally poised. But there's been a couple of instances already in this inning where he looks frustrated out there that he's not getting certain calls. 2-0 the count, 2 away, runner does not go. That one hits the spot in there for a strike. Moves the count to 2-1. Did you see this pitch sequence with Angel Hernandez the other day, Ty? Three strikes called that were at least three baseballs outside of the plate. In the same in the same Just right in a row? That one's in there for a strike as well. Moves the count to 2-2. Two -two. Runner goes. Christensen bobbles. Can't make the throw. So runner's on second and third. With still two outs. Yeah, all three pitches. About two to three baseballs outside. And uh, rung him up. Not helping his reputation no. with that, Ty. Deuces with two away. Carter goes back to the windup. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Tries to go outside, misses outside, fills up the count at 3-2. Payoff pitch, center fielder Nix. That one's in there for a strike. It's fouled off into the Wasatch dugout and will reset at a 3-2 count. Got her back working out of the windup. Wasatch playing normal depth across the board with two outs. The 3-2 again. That one misses low. Ball four. That'll be walk number three in the inning, and that'll load the bases up and bring up the right fielder, Easton Padita. Ty, there's just an epidemic going on with this baseball team with free passes in the first inning right now, isn't it? I mean, Carter has been so good at throwing strikes. And as you talk about already, three walks, Tyler, and two errors in the inning. Orem doesn't have a hit, and they're leading 1-0. This one's going to be a base knock right back up the middle. One run will come in. Two runs will come in. And just like that, on the two out, that one's going to hit off the mound and bounce back to the backstop. So both runners will advance to first and second. And the two out, two RBI single from Padita brings the score to 3-0. Yeah, and when it rains, it pours. Huh? Burdett doing a good job getting that ball in, and unfortunately, we don't go catch it. At first base, it hits the mound and takes a 90-degree hop the other way and gives free bags again. So rather than runners on second and first with two outs, now you're looking at runners on third and second with two outs and another hit. We'll score two more runs here, Ty. One the count here to Parker Van Buren. Did not play in the game on Friday, starting at first base today. Carter back working out of the windup with the 2-0 count. That one misses low and outside again, and Carter visibly frustrated with that no call. So that moves the count to 2-0. Yeah, umpire also shook his head over to the dugout, Tyler. So Wasatch chirping at him a little bit from the dugout. Could be a long game in the first inning if we're already calling for calls like that and pitchers frustrated. Hopefully Carter can count. channel that a little bit, Tyler, and get him out here. That one misses, I think, high. 3-0 the count, two away. Pitch also up and high, and that'll be ball four once again. So that'll be four walks in the inning, and that'll load the bases once again. Already the score, 3-0. We talked about this on Friday, Tyler, and these are stats that are not fun to have to repeat, but now four straight games, Wasatch at this point has significantly more runs on the board than hits from the other team. Right now, Orem with three runs, leading 3-0 with only one hit on the day. And when you walk four guys in an inning to go along with two other errors, that's the kind of thing you're gonna see happen. It's gonna bring up the number nine hitter, the catcher, Jack Allen. Two doubles and four RBIs coming into the series. Had two singles in the game on Friday. Swings at the second pitch after falling ahead 1-0. Now that will be fouled off, moves count to 1-1. You know, as much grief as Angel Hernandez gets, Tyler, those major league umpires do a pretty good job for how fast those balls are moving and how quickly that game develops in the bigs. I'm amazed at the amount of calls they get right. That one's in there for a strike. Moves the count to 1-2 with two away. Again, bases loaded. Wasatch trying to minimize already a three-run top of the first inning. Doesn't change the fact that it's fun to see kids, you know, going as a blind Angel Hernandez on Halloween as a costume. That's kind of fun, but... Dallin misses in the dirt. Job. Christensen does a good job of blocking it. It's I, I don't I'll, Ty. I think you're right. They're pretty darn good. I don't know if it's good if you're known as an umpire. Like if it, people know who your name, not sure that's a good idea. There's a swing and a miss for our first strikeout of the ball game, but the damage is done. Three runs on one hit, two errors, three are left on base. It's three zero as we go into the bottom of the first. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Napa Know How 
your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City. Stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know-how. Hi. This is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. And now, to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bottom of the first inning brought to you by A Good Spa Day, your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick A Good Spa Day to be your spa. Ty, let's go ahead and give a shout out to some of the best performers Wasatch has had this year. And actually, let's do this. Let's go through the batting lineup brought to you by Bank of Utah, and we'll give some highlights of some of the standout performers from this season. This lineup brought to you by Bank of Utah, who has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. Leading off for Wasatch will be senior Carter Bucod hitting 326 on the year. He'll be followed by Blake Sweat hitting 294 on the year for Wasatch. Hitting third will be Riker Evans at 281. First pitch in there for a called strike tie. Fourth for the Wasatch will be sophomore Crew Baxter. Baxter hitting 286 on the year. Grant Mahoney will be hitting in the five spot, leading the way for Wasatch in batting average at 385. In the sixth hole will be Bridger Shaw. That one's gonna be a ground ball back to the pitcher. Miller fields it cleanly, tosses it over to first base for one away. Shaw hitting 205 on the season, Tyler, and he'll be in that six hole. Hitting seven will be Micah Dahl at 208 on the year. In the eight hole today will be senior Zach Burdett hitting 244. And in the nine spot will be Kyron Stocking hitting 273. Blake Sweat comes into the box, 294, three doubles and a home run and four RBIs on the year. That one misses outside for ball one. Again, Miller 5-0 and on the season with 31 strikeouts, a complete game and is committed to play at Brigham Young University. That one in there for a strike, moves count to 1-1. On deck is Riker Evans for the Wasp, trailing 3-0 here in the bottom of the first. Swing and a miss for strike two. 1-2 two the count. One to the count, one away. The pitch, that one too low, moves count to 2-2. Two, two. Working out of the windup is Miller. Delivers, and that one bounces off the plate, moves the count to 3-2, full count. Miller delivers the payoff pitch. That one swung on. It's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. One hop, fills it clean, throws it to first, two away. It's a pretty good weapon that Orm has here, Tyler, to be able to go 90-91 on Friday with your Arizona State commit and come back here on Monday with 88-89 from Miller, who's committed to at BYU. Two really good arms on the mound. To go with some good bats in the lineup, Tyler, makes a really competitive team. It's going to bring up Riker Evans, 290 on the year, two doubles, a home run, and seven RBIs for the senior, first baseman. 1 0 the count after a couple, now 2 0 after a couple of misses. Starting to rain a little bit here at Wasatch High School. 2 0 the count, Miller working out of the windup, delivers the 2 0. And that fastball's fouled off behind us for a 2 1 count. I mentioned that Riker is down below 300 now on the year at 281. But this is a guy that finds a way to get on base. His on base percentage is at 465. This is going to be a ground ball to the 5 6 hole. Backhander by Burge. Sets his feet, throws it across the diamond. Not in time. 
And you said it, Ty, another infield single here for Riker Evans, and Wasatch has their first base runner of the day. Yeah, he just gets on base, Tyler. That's not the prettiest hit, but that absolutely is a single. I think Burge didn't know his situation, Tyler, to be honest. He had more time to plant and make a little better throw than he did with Evans coming down the line. Evans doesn't have blazing speed for Wasatch, and Burge rushed it, brought his first baseman off, and Evans was able to run by and get safe easily. That one's in there for a strike. Moves count to 0-1 to Crew Baxter, the sophomore, 286, a double and four RBIs on the year for Crew Baxter's playing left field today. The 0-1, swung on, that one's laced to center field. Center fielder's gonna come up and make, no, can't make the sliding grab. Ball's on the ground, and we're gonna give that a single to Crew Baxter on a pretty good barrel there from the sophomore. That was an excellent barrel, Tyler. Crew right on that, stayed inside the baseball and hit a rope. It's gonna be a good single there, Ty. I am gonna pick on Riker Evans just a little bit. He probably doesn't have the speed to get to third base, Tyler, but he got caught watching that ball a little bit. With two outs, he should just be busting it on the move. A single there, trying to get to third base. Instead, he was kind of assuming the catch was gonna be made and was starting to let up before he got to second base and potentially lost a base there. Would have, would have been hard for him to go first to third on that ball, Tyler. Strike one here to Mahoney. Leads the team with a 385 batting average, five doubles, nine RBIs. Had the lone RBI in game one on Friday. And you mentioned, Ty, the lone um, hit that was out of the infield against Davies. He's going to swing at this one. Moves count to 2-0. Moves the count to 2-0. Or excuse me, moves the count to 0-2. Runners on first and second. Wasatch trailing 3-0 here in the bottom of the first. Miller comes set working out of the stretch. Delivers the 0-2. It's an off-speed pitch. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it for the first inning. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two are left on base. Wasatch trails 3-0 as we move into the second. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer a large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit uccu.com and elevate your banking experience. This is live coverage of Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the second inning for Wasatch Baseball brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries, let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Pitching change brought to you by Mirror Lake Station, voted best donuts in Utah. Stop on into Mirror Lake Station for gas, groceries, and goodies. Owners David and Christian Wade invite you to swing by and say hello this season at Mirror Lake Station. Riker Evans on the mound now for the Wasp. Carter Bucod will move to shortstop. Bridger Shaw at second base. Crew Baxter will move to first base. Kyron Stocking in right field, and Blake Sweat will move from right field to left field. If you're just getting caught up with us here, Tyler, let me give you the Gordon Law Group stat breakdown that really tells the story. Wasatch trailing 3-0, but they have out-hit Orem 2-1 in this game. Four walks and two errors in the first inning doomed Wasatch and fortunate to only give up three runs after an inning like that. Wasatch got two hits in the bottom of the first but weren't able to push any runs across. Riker Evans, an 11.5 ERA on the year. 
He'll miss low and away for ball one to the leadoff batter, Zach Ingeman. Flew out to center field on the first pitch of the game. Burge will be on deck, and then Bostock will be in the hole. That one misses too far outside as well. Moves count to 2-0. Ingeman in game one on Friday. That one's going to be swung on and fouled off. Let's see, he was two for four, had a couple of singles, and the run scored. Moves count to 2-1. Loss that shaded a little bit to the right-hand side with the right-handed batter up. Now we're going to miss outside. Moves down to 3-1. Sure you could hear that, Tyler, on the air. That ball got away from Garrett behind the dish. Twice now he's not reached that glove all the way out on those outside pitches. And Ty, It's an indicator. You can watch the catchers and how much they're having to move, and that will really give you a good indicator on the control of the pitchers. And Garrett's had to move a lot between Carter and Riker here in his first batter. He's reaching inside, outside, up, down, and the control doesn't seem to be there today for the Wasatch pitchers. 85 innings pitched on the year. Wasatch has 80 walks in those 85 innings pitched, so almost a walk in any. Counting that one that just happened? 81 walks. 81 now after that walk. That one. This is outside for ball one. 1-0 one -oh the count with the runner on first. Wasatch trailing 3-0 here in the top of the second. Evans comes set, looks at the runner at first base. Goes back to the submarine. This one's going to be elevated to shallow right field. Tough play. Bridger Shaw bouncing over. Can't make the play. Can't come up with the ball, and everybody's going to be safe. On the bloop single from Cyberge, Kyberge. Yeah, that'll be a single there, Tyler. Just another one of those balls that finds its way down. Baseball can be unfair sometimes. You're needing something to go your way if you're Wasatch right now, and you get a really crummy hit out of the box, but it just finds some open grass out there, unfortunately. Puts two guys on for Merrick Bostock. 17 RBIs coming into this series. Yesterday went three for three with a walk, a double, a single, and a triple. Only needed a home run to go for the cycle. 3-0 the count, first and second. Wind starting to really come in from center field. This is going to be a sharply hit ground ball to the shortstop. Flips it to Shaw. Shaw to first. Nice, 6-4-3, double play, and Wasich has two away. Ingeman will advance to third on the ground ball. But a nice double play there from Bukad to Shaw to, Ab or excuse me, to Baxter. And Wasich has two away. Ty, I talked about him in the first inning, that the only way to get him on a double play ball is if it is sharply hit right at you, and he delivered, didn't he? That ball was a rope, one hop into Carter Bucod's glove, didn't really have to move, put a good ball over there to Bridger, who made a good quick turn and a good scoop out of the turf from Baxter and still only got him by about a step. Another submarine pitch is going to be elevated to center field. Zach Burdett comes up, comes up, makes the play, and Wasatch gets out of the inning. No runs scored on one hit, no errors, and one runner is left on base. It's 3-0 as we go into the bottom of the second. Big O Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robards Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robards Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Chad here from Mountain Watch Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com 
or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Gravity Coalition offering the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. It'll be Bridger Shaw, Mike Adal, Zach Burdett to lead it off here in the bottom of the second. Wasatch trailing 3-0. That one's in there for a strike on the outside corner to Shaw, who comes in 205, a triple and seven RBIs on the season for the junior. That's a fastball, misses low, moves the count to 1-1. One, one. One, one, misses inside, moves the count to 2-1. Two, two, that one coming at 88 miles per hour. Again, tied to give you an idea of the fastball that's jumping from Miller. That one gets the outside corner, moves the count to 2-2. Two, two. Not sure that's been consistently called for Wasatch today, Tyler. 2-2 two, two the count here to Shaw. The pitch, that one misses, bounces in front of the bag. Now or in front of the plate, moves count to 3-2, full count. Wind up, payoff. Swung on, a little bit out of the zone, but swung on and missed. Second strikeout of the day for Miller. Uh, moves it one away, brings up junior Mike Adal, 217, a double and three RBIs on the year for the third baseman today. That one in there for a strike, moves count 201. Another fastball, miss, or nope, that gets the outside corner as well. Moves count to 0-2. Yeah, Ty, and I think why you're getting that call there, because that is a similar type location that Wasatch hasn't gotten. But watch the way the catcher is receiving it for Orem. He's, Miller's hitting the spot, Tyler. Back behind the dish, Allen is not having to move. He's going up to receive it, and it looks clean to the umpire. And so if you're setting up in a spot and you're hitting it just off the plate, the umpire is going to reward you. Fouls off to 2 fouls off another 0-2. So this will be the fifth pitch of the at-bat after a couple of foul balls. That go back to the backstop, and we'll reset at 0-2. Wind up, delivers, goes to the off speed, gets a swing and a miss. Three straight swinging Ks for Miller, and that makes, moves it to two outs. Ty, that strikeout comes from the breaking ball, but I'm going to call that a velocity strikeout. Miller, er, excuse me, not Miller, Dahl started that swing before that pitch even started breaking. And he, he wasn't even close to that thing, Tyler. You could see Dahl didn't have confidence that he could get caught up to that fastball. So he's starting his swing earlier than he normally would, and he didn't stand a chance on that breaking pitch, Tyler, because he just never could see it out of the hand because his motion in the box was trying to catch up to the fastball. 244 batting average for Zach Burdett. Leads the team with 10 runs scored. Takes ball one, strike one. 1-1 one, one the count with two away. One, 1-1 one, the pitch. Swung on. It's going to be a ground ball to third baseman. Bostock fields it cleanly. Throws it across the diamond in time. And Wasatch is retired in order. 1-2-3. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. 3-0 as we move into the third. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. 
Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Top of the third inning here at Wasatch High School where Wasatch Baseball trails 3-0 to the Orem Tigers. Third inning action brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Call Physical at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve balance and regain your freedom. It's going to be Davies, Nix, Petita to lead it off here for the Orem Tigers. Nix walked in his first at bat. Now is at a 1-2 count with nobody out. This one's going to be swung on into the Orem dugout. We'll keep the count at 1-2. Davies, the Arizona State commit, tie, but not for hitting. They want that arm down there. Goes back to the submarine, and this one's going to be fouled off into the girls lacrosse game that's going on over to the right of us. Wasatch taking on Olympus in that one. One, two to count after a couple of foul balls. The pitch goes back to the fastball, jams him, run, uh, ground ball to the second baseman. Shaw fields it clean, throws it to Baxter, and Wasatch has one away. Riker's done a good job coming in. Tyler in relief for Bukad. Had the initial walk in that uh, second inning when he came in. But since then, he's been really, really efficient and keeping Wasatch in this game. It's going to bring up Nix, who also walked in his first at bat. Uh, pitch is in there for not a strike. You're living a little bit dangerously, Tyler, when you go against the number one team in the state and you're throwing a guy with a little less velocity. But sometimes that can be just what the doctor ordered against a good team that's used to seeing really competitive, fast pitching. And I think you're seeing a little bit here that Orem's timing's off. Wasatch starting with Bukan, who throws a little bit harder than Riker. Now Riker's come in, and through the top half of the lineup, Tyler, he's really controlled them by getting them to hit balls either popping up or pounding it into the turf because their timing is off balance. 1-2 the count after a couple of foul balls here to Nix, who's playing center field today. And Evans, like he said, is doing a good job of filling up the zone. 1-2 the count, one away. Right-handed batter back into the box. Evans working out of the strip, or excuse me, out of the windup. Delivers. This one's going to be elevated to center field. Burdett doesn't even really have to move. Settles underneath it. Makes the grab. Two away. and it goes to show you don't have to throw hard to get outs. What you need to do to get outs is throw strikes. Riker just threw that at 62 miles an hour. Tyler, 62 miles an hour, and he's keeping these guys off balance. Davies, an Arizona State commit, he threw it 66 miles per hour, and he pounded it into the turf over to the second baseman. You Tyler don't have to throw hard to get to outs. Bacod, Bacod rounds it, fills it, throws it over to first base in time. Wasatch has back-to-back -back goose egg innings for the first time in three games as they retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Bottom of the third coming up. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage, and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Good Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned Ace stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Traeger, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your Home. Around the block, what you need in stock is people who know how to help. See acehardware.com for details. Pingo 
Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the third, brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist. Dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries, let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Drag bunt attempt here from Stocking is fielded foul. And we'll go back with one strike here to Stocking. Pretty good drag bunt there from Stocking. Pretty good drag bunt. Also good reaction from both Stock on third, Tyler. He closed that quickly and tried to make a throw on the run. Wasn't on target, and Kyron, had that ball been fair, would have found himself into a single because that's just a tough play for a third baseman to make. It'll be stocking, then back up to the top of the order with Bukad and Sweat. The 0-1 pitch is swung on, fouled off into the Orem dugout. 0-2 the count to the junior stocking. Pitch from Miller goes back to the fastball. That one's a swing, or excuse me, backwards K. First backwards K of the game, but fourth strikeout of the game for Miller. And Stocking is retired as we move back to the top of the order to Bacot, who grounded out to the pitcher in his first at bat. And yeah, froze him, Tyler. He was clearly looking for something else out of the hand of Miller. Because that is a pretty good pitch. Definitely an easy strike for the umpire to call, and Kyron knew it. Off speed, misses high for ball one. Here to Carter. Carter started on the mound. Now playing shortstop for Wasatch. That one bounces in front of the plate. Now move the count to 2-0. Oh, man. As I, how, how, Tyler, I was say, how just gets so mad at the pitcher when they do that. <laughs> Got nobody on base. Coming, it's a 1-0 count. It's a fastball, and you throw it 58 <laughs> feet and off the catcher's uh, forearm. About 42-degree weather. Got to love that. At 89 miles per hour. Yeah. You're fouled. not happy with that if you're the catcher. 2-0 is fouled off. Moves count to 2-1 for the senior Bukat. One away. The pitch. That one's roped to the left field side. Nice line drive. Base knock there for Carter Bukat. And Wasatch has a base runner with one away. Ty, the bats have been on Wasatch's side today. They have the edge over Orem right now. Three hits on the day for Wasatch. Two hits for Orem. Wasatch has a few more barrels that have come off better than Orem, but right now Orem has taken advantage of the freebies from Wasatch. Five walks on the day to go along with two errors, and that's why they lead 3-0. God grounded out to the second baseman in his first time up. Yesterday walked, singled on an infield single to the shortstop, and then a couple of flyouts. One for four, now one for five in the series after the ground out in his first bat day. He'll take strike one. Now back into the box with Riker Evans on deck. 0-1 the count, one away. A couple of looks from Miller, now he'll come set in the stretch. Pickoff move, not in time. Bukat able to get back to the back. Did you know the NBA season ended yesterday, Ty? I saw a headline yeah, about, about that, Ty. You know when that? the Jazz lose 12 or so games straight? <laughs> hey, the, they got the two wins in a row. bringing up, Tyler, is official. Hockey team coming to yeah, Utah. Yeah, yeah. Right? Little hit and run action. That one's through the four five, or excuse me, through the three four hole. So a single from Sweat and Bukad, who was on the run, will advance to first and third. So runners on the corners with one away with Riker Evans coming up to the plate. That's really good execution there from Blake Tyler. Didn't try to do too much. Good back control. Orem did not stay disciplined at second base. They played that very poorly as that ball was coming through. What you teach your second baseman to do is you need to take a couple steps in, Tyler. You're not going to the bag when you see the runner going. You take a couple steps in to close that gap and then when the ball clears the zone, then you sprint to the bag. Angaman did not do that. Instead, he went straight to the bag and opened up a wide open space through that 4-3 hole, and Sweat just was able to trickle it through and get Bukat easily over to third base. One ball, no strikes here as Riker Evans comes up to the plate. He had an infield single to the shortstop in his last at bat. That one low, ball two. So first and third, Wasatch trailing 3-0. Trying to get back in this thing and threatening with one away and a runner in scoring position. 
That's one thing, Tyler, I want to give credit to Coach Jacobson that he has a really good feel for that we've seen over the last few years watching him coach. He puts on hit and run at the right time, and he teaches his players well how to execute that. Tyler, over the last few seasons, that's something Wasatch has done better than most teams in the state. 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. Behind that one, moves count to 2-1. The crew Baxter on deck. Both Evans and Baxter singled back in the first inning. Let's see if they can get some base knocks here with guidance scoring position. 2-1 the count. Evans back in the box. Miller sets. High late kick. Delivers. Runner goes. It's another hit and run. And this one's going to be fouled off to the to Coach Jacobson on the third base side. Moves count to 2-2. And Blake Swell will go back to first base. Yeah, and that same thing happened again too, Tyler. Angaman on a sprint over to second, and with a runner being held at first base, you had about 80 feet wide open over there where the second baseman should be playing. Wide open for Evans if he could get a ball in that direction. The 2-2 goes back to the off speed. It's going to be a ground ball to Bosak, who can't fill it cleanly. Shortstop's going to come over, but the error by the third baseman will load the bases as Evans is safe at first. That's a good read from Carter Bukad too, Tyler. He was tracking that ball as it went by him on the third baseline and reacting to get back to the bag. You might be wondering, well, why didn't he score on that ball, Tyler? Because if that's caught by uh, Bostock at third base and Bukad's going home, he's dead in the water. And if he's not retreating to the bag, he's going to be able to be tagged out as well. So Carter had to retreat, and the ball didn't get away far enough for him to be able to go home. And with less than two outs, you still have a high percentage chance to score here if you're Wasatch with a runner on third base. So a good read from Bukad to hold it there and see if Baxter can get you in. Baxter, one of the better barrels on the game here today, too, in his first at bat. It's going to bring up Baxter, as you said, is singled to the center fielder in his last at bat. Bases are loaded with one away. Wasatch trailing 3-0. You got a favorite for the NBA tie? Do I what? You have a favorite for who you think is going to win? Celtics, they're blowing everybody out. Set records this year for most double-digit victories. The Jazz, do they have a chance? No, I? no, they're not. They don't. Oh, yeah, they're out, of, they're out of the playoffs. So. Do you know who has the number one seed in the West, Ty? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, I didn't see how it ended. It was the um, T-Wolves were tied with the Thunder, right? Did the Thunder end up getting so it? the Thunder ended up getting number one. The Nuggets ended up number two, and the T-Wolves number three. Oh, that's tough for the Timberwolves. They were all year yeah. at number one. They end up lost it late. 2 0 the count. One away for Crew Baxter trying to break that goose egg off the scoreboard for Wasatch here in the bottom of the third. That one swung on and fouled off. And that moves down to 2 1. I'm anxious in this at bat to see the growth of this Wasatch team here, Tyler. Early on the season, one of the plagues that got them was in this situation, they often would strike out, either whether it was looking or swinging. See if Baxter can be competitive and get this ball in play. Fouls that run off as well. Moves the count to 2-2. Two, two. So two balls, two strikes, one out. Base is loaded with one away. Wasatch trailing 3-0. Baxter in on the left-hand side of the box. Grant Mahoney, who leads the team in RBIs, on deck. The 2-2. Two, two. Goes back to the fastball. Misses. Miller wanted that one, and that'll fill up the count at 3-2. First time we've seen Miller physically react to a pitch. Really thought he had hit the spot on that one. That's because Wasatch has gotten to him, Tyler. Four hits already in only the third inning. The payoff goes back to what looked like maybe a little off-speed pitch there. That one's fouled off. Keeps count at 3-2. Quality of bat here from Crew, Tyler. Let's see if he can finish. Miller working out of the windup with one out. The pitch. That one bounces. Base on balls will bring in the first run of the game. That's the first walk of the game for Miller. And Wasatch breaks the goose egg, and that's going to move the count or move the score to three to one. Base is still loaded. One out for Grant Mahoney. You mentioned it, Tyler. Grant Mahoney leading the team in batting average. 385 coming into this game. 15 hits, nine RBIs. And Tyler, the leader in doubles, and a double here would be just what the doctor ordered. Should give Wasatch the lead if he could get a double into the gap with the bases loaded. Miller still working out of the windup. That one's going to miss low and away for ball one. 
Blake Sweat at third base, Riker Evans at second, and Crew Baxter at first base with Miller out of the windup. Should be able to get a decent lead. The 1 0 pitch is going to be swung on, and it's another base knock through the 3 4 hole in between the first and second baseman. Evans will stay at third base. Ball's going to bounce away a little bit. Catcher will secure it, and a one out RBI single for Graham Mahoney. He now has double digit RBIs on the year. It's just good discipline hitting from these Wasatch players. Grant not trying to do too much. Just a nice little opposite field hit right past the first baseman. It's a good hold from Coach Jacobson there, Tyler. That ball, it did get away, but it got away perfectly to the catcher. Bounced off the wrist of the first baseman and right into the catcher's glove standing at home plate. So it couldn't have pinballed better for Orem. And uh, Wasatch would have been in trouble if they were trying to go score from second to home on that one. Base is still loaded, three to two the score with two runs scored here in the bottom of the third. Braxton Fowler will come in as a speed up runner for Riker Evans at third base. Crew Baxter at second, Mahoney at first base. The hitter is Bridger Shaw, swings, fouls that one off, one strike. Bridger's last at bat was a strikeout, Tyler, and he looked a little bit off with his swing. His back foot was sliding out kind of towards the Orem dugout when he was swinging. And on that one, he had a little bit of the same action. 3-2, this is going to be a ground ball. It'll go just foul through the third base side. Lose the count to 0-2. job from Bostock. You want to defend those lines. Bostock doing a good job of keeping that one if it was fair. It's an ideal double play ball. Can touch the bag, throw in the first. 0-2 the count, one away. Shot back in the box. Miller continues to work out of the windup with one away. The 0-2. Hits the spot, but it's too far outside. Moves count to 1 2. Micah Dahl on deck for Wasatch. Orem, the number one team in 5A. 1 2. Swung on and fouled off. That keeps the count at 1 2. It's a really good approach from Bridger there, Tyler. He's looking for the fastball, and they're going to adjust to the breaking pitch. That's a good fastball on the outer half of the plate. Bridger wasn't fooled, was able to foul it off. Let's see if he can get a breaking pitch coming back here. Does get the breaking pitch. That one skips off the plate. Allen does a good job of keeping it in front of him. Moves the count to 2-2. I think Miller's got a lot of confidence in his fastball here, Tyler. Last time he was 2-2 in this situation, he went fastball to the hitter. Let's see if he goes similar. Goes with the fastball, and that freezes him. That's going to be a backwards K, two away. That'll bring up Micah Dahl. 217 batting average, a double, and three RBIs coming in today. Struck out swinging in his first at bat. So you're starting to see some trends with Miller, right? Bases loaded a couple times, got to a 2 2 count. Both times he came back to the fastball. Tyler not wanting to risk it. He's got confidence in that pitch. Something Wasatch can look for moving forward in the future. Swing and a miss here to Dahl. Moves the count to 0 1. Mahoney had a pretty good lead over at first base. Went for the back pick, but Allen not able to get it into his hand. Everybody's safe. 0-1 the count with two away. Miller delivers the 0-1. That one misses low and outside. Four ball one. 1-1 one, one now the count. Well, Wasatch Fowler, already with two runs scored. Fowler at third base. Needs to be getting a good secondary read here. See if there's a ball in the dirt that gets outside of that dirt area, Tyler. I'd like to see him take a chance. Swing and a miss, moves the count to 1 2. Last time Dahl went down on the breaking pitch, Tyler, and it, it just looks to see B1. He's not identifying well. Let's see if Miller wants to go back to that one here. The 1 2, misses just outside. Great job from Miller keeping that one in front of him. Yeah, that was the pitch that you're hoping would get away from him, Tyler, if he's going to go down in the dirt, down and out. It's a good job from Allen to keep it in front. 2-2 two, two, the count, two away. Miller, the windup. The pitch. That one misses outside again, and that'll fill up the count at 3-2. And now that'll give Wasatch a head start with full count and two outs. Some interesting stats looking at this so far, Tyler. 66 pitches already for Miller. We're only in the third inning. So get up to 67 at least here on this one. In comparison, Wasatch at 60 pitches through three innings. The number you and I like to bring up, 15 pitchers or less, is really what you want for an efficient inning for your pitcher. So, or I'm averaging 20 plus pitches per inning right now. Swung on and fouled off, and that'll keep the count at full. Miller opting to go out of the windup despite giving the head start. So, Wasatch with a big lead 
Yeah, and that's too bad that Dahl missed that one, Tyler, because that was a fastball up a little bit in the zone with the runners getting a head start in the windup. Base hit there could have done a lot of damage. The payoff again. That one misses outside, and that ties the ball game. Second walk of the inning for Miller. And Wasatch brings in their third run and ties the sing at 3-3. Three three. So a couple Doria Sano key moments to this inning, Tyler. Obviously the base hits that have happened have been big. The Mahoney RBI single, for example. But I want to point to Crew Baxter and now Micah Dahl there. Tyler, both hitters got to a 3-2 count and fouled off a good 3-2 pitch. And then got to that next seventh pitch, Tyler, were able to draw a walk in the at-bat in order to bring in a run. So two RBIs by just quality at-bats that go seven-plus pitches in this inning. One from Crew Baxter, one from Micah Dahl. It's going to bring up Zach Burdett, who grounded out to the third baseman in his first at bat to end the second inning. Miller's going to continue to work out of the windup. Swung on and missed for strike one. That had some sink action to it, didn't it, Ty, on that pitch? Almost looked like a changeup that was diving down and away. 0 oh, 1 the count. Base is loaded here for Wasatch. And I, I think it was, Ty. That one only came across 80 miles per hour on that first pitch. Comes back with a little more velocity on the second one and has Zach behind. Swing and a miss, moves the count to 0-2. Mahoney at second, Dahl at first, and Baxter at third base. Wasatch, three to three, with three runs scored here in the bottom of the third to tie this game up. The 0-2. Goes back inside. That one gets away from the catcher. Not far enough. So one, two. He went back to the change up there, which I, I find to be interesting, Tyler. So he's just trying to get Zach off balance with a changing of speeds, but not a change of pitch I, I, identity, right? Like a breaking pitch you're able to identify easily, but instead he's just going fast, soft with the fastball and change up. This is going to be a ground ball to the pitcher. Miller bounces off the mound, throws it over to first base, but it brings the first baseman off the bag, and another run will come in, and Wasage takes the lead. 4-3 to three on the throwing air. These pitchers, Tyler, it's just so funny this game. They throw the ball so well on the mound, strike after strike after strike, but you ask them to throw a ball 60 to 70 feet over to first base, and it's like asking them to solve the greatest mystery in the world. Sometimes that's the hardest throw for them to make. Miller just can't deliver. And now Warren finds themselves down for the first time. He's going to bring up Kyron Stocking for the second time this inning. He actually started the inning with a backwards K. He'll take ball one. Wasatch four runs here in the bottom of the third to take the 4-3 to three lead. That one misses. 2-0 the count. Up over 70 pitches now for Miller. Warren does have a couple of guys getting loose over behind their dugout. The 2-0. Swing and a miss for strike one. Ty, I know people are probably sick of us saying this, but it's just so eerie sometimes, isn't it, how the freebies match the runs. Orm, how many freebies in this inning? Two errors, two walks, there's four runs on the board. And uh, they've just been shaky. They've, they've given this one back to Wasatch by not executing themselves. Yeah. Now, Wasatch has earned it pretty well. I talked about that crew Baxter um, at bat and the Micah Dahl. Those are good quality at bats to get those runs across, but they're walks nonetheless. It's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Burge fills a clean, flips it to second base, and the inning is done. But Wasatch takes the lead on four runs on three hits. Two errors in the inning and three are left on base. It's four to three for Wasatch as we go into the fourth. Napa know how. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Top of the 
fourth inning brought to you by Gravity Coalition, who offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. It'll be Van Buren, Allen, and then top of the order to Ingeman. Van Buren swings at the 1-0 pitch, fouls that one down the first base side. 1-1, now the count. Walked in his first in bat, first baseman today. Was not in the lineup in game one of the series. That one misses, low and outside for ball one. Ball two, two on the count. Swing and fouls that one into the catcher's glove. 2-2 now the count. Interesting, Ty Johnson, who's the second baseman and the leadoff hitter for Coach Hermanson, not in the lineup today. Second baseman instead is Zach Ingeman. The 2-2 goes back to the submarine, not that close, moves the count to 3-2. And that has gotten them a little bit, Tyler, where that hit and run uh, from Sweat probably is going to be hit either way, Tyler, but definitely was not executed well by the second baseman of Oral. 3-2, that one's going to be roped to the right center field gap. Van Buren rounds first. He's going to get an easy double. He'll stop at second base, and Wasatch, or excuse me, Orem has a leadoff double trying to answer Wasatch's four-run bottom of the third. Well, it's the sign of a good team, isn't it? When you get punched, you come punch right back, Tyler, and Orem doesn't waste any time. Leadoff hitter getting a double off the wall. Going to try to tie this one up quickly. He's going to bring up the catcher, Allen, who struck out in his first at bat. Came into the series, two doubles and four RBIs in game one on Friday. Was two for three. Lined out of the center fielder, single through the 5-6 hole twice. Has an RBI opportunity here with runner on second. Let's see if Coach Hermanson decides to go small ball here with the number nine hitter in the top of the order up. Allen in the right-handed batter box. Couple looks here from Evans. Allen will square, and that one's on the outside corner for strike one. Long set of signs here from Coach Hermanson. Again, Coach Hermanson making his first coaching appearance back at Wasatch High School. Coached at Wasatch High School as the head coach until 2003. Oh, one the count here from Evans. Takes two looks. Delivers on the submarine. It's another bun. It's going to be back to the pitcher. Evans fills it cleanly. Throws it to Shaw, who's covering second base or covering from second base. So one away. Runner will advance to third. One away. And that'll move us to the top of the order to Ingeman. Good coverage from Bridger at second base there, Tyler. He got over there with plenty of time, and it allowed a confident throw from Riker. Tyler, he stepped into that and threw a bullet. It's not something pitchers can do if your second baseman is still running over there and you're trying to hit it on a timing pattern. Wasatch with the one-run lead is going to bring the infield in. The submarine pitch is in the dirt away. Christensen does a good job of smothering it. One away, guy on third base. Ingeman starting second baseman, 0 for 1 with a walk. He's going to swing at this one. It's going to be a line drive to right field. Kelson can't come up with it. Excuse me, Stocking can't come up with it. It's going to get by him all the way to the warning track. It's going to be a triple for Ingeman. And another run will come in, and it's a tie ball game at 4 to 4. Ty, I didn't check that before the pitch, but uh, looked like that one might have been more a little position issue in right field, Tyler, where the right fielder was. Playing pretty deep after that first hitter got a ball off the wall in the right center gap. And Stocking looked like he had a long ways to come into a ball that could have been caught. So 4-4 four four the score, or I'm able to answer after Wasatch's four-run bottom of the third. Only one away, guy on third. Brings up Kai Burge, the shortstop. Walked and singled to right field on a little blue single in his last at bat. Working out of the windup is Evans. That one's in there for a strike. Moves count to 1-1. Wasatch still continuing to play with the infield cut off. Playing up on the grass. Second time through the lineup here for Evans. He's given up a couple of extra base hits in the inning. Goes back, it's just going to be a fister down the first base side. And Wasatch is going to field it foul. That was a good play from Riker, Tyler. He can't see what's going on behind him with the third base runner who wasn't going. But on a hopper like that, that's low up the line. Evans is assuming he's going. And if he fields that and gets the out at first, that run's going to score. 
in retrospect, he could have picked it up and tagged him out, and the runner wasn't going, Tyler, and it would have been a better scenario for Wasatch, but there's no way for him to be able to see that. One, two, the count goes back to the submarine. It's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. Bukad fills it cleanly, throws it across the diamond, and brings Baxter off the bag. Baxter able to lay the tag down, and Wasatch gets the out and is able to hold the runner at third base. So two away, Wasatch will be able to go back to playing regular infield here with the score four to four. That's an important sequence here, Tyler. I don't think we're giving enough credit to how good of a job Riker Evans is doing here, though, Tyler. And he's he's doing something that you often have talked about. As a pitcher in high school baseball, the best way to get outs is to throw strikes consistently, right? And I think you're seeing that from Riker. He has been between 60 and 70 miles per hour is all that he's throwing today. And he's controlled Orem pretty well in this ball game by doing that very thing, Tyler, because he's around the zone, he's mixing up the looks of pitches, and he's keeping them off balance. Too often, you overthink it as a hitter in baseball, or as a pitcher, excuse me, right? You think you've got to do something spectacular and special, but Riker's not doing that. He's just going up there and throwing strikes and doing a good job for Wasatch. 1-1 one, one gets through Christensen's legs, and Orem will take the lead out 5-4. It's been a tough day behind the dish for Garrett today, Tyler. Kind of has his head down coming back. I think he knows that's a ball he should have smothered. Third time the ball's gotten past him today. Worm retakes the lead at 5-4. to four. Now bases are clear with two outs. Bostock reached on an error in the first at bat and then grounded out into a 6-4-3 double play in his second at bat. The 2-1 goes back to the submarine. This is low and outside for ball three. 3-1 now the count. Ty, I'll say just one more thing about the pitching of Evans here just to finish my thought on this. What he's doing is effective but it won't be effective for seven innings. If you're throwing 60 to 70 miles per hour against the number one team in the state three or four times through the lineup, they, they will get to you. And so this is something he needs to hold them, be efficient to get through innings, not give away free walks, so that you can only be two-ish times through the lineup by the time you get to the sixth or seventh inning. And then at that point, you hope you're in the game and you can bring in a closer to shut it down for you. Bostock's going to go on the first pitch. Christensen's throw gets into the center field. Bostock will advance to third base on the overthrow. So a stolen base and then an overthrow. Carl will almost send him home, Ty, as Wasatch is a little bit slow getting that ball back into the infield. So one ball, no strikes, two outs, and a runner on third base for Orem leading 5-4. Well, if Riker goes in the windup, I don't think Carl would be opposed to sending him home, Tyler, on a steal. So be careful here if you're Wasatch going in the windup with both stock speed at third. The 1 0, that one's in there for strike one. 1 1, now the count. Carl looks content to let his four hitter go to work here right now, though, Ty. A couple of pop ups today for the number four hitter. A big swing and a miss there from the pitcher Miller. Popped up to the pitcher and popped out to the center fielder in his two at bats. 0 for 2 today. Had a double in his last at bat down the third base side. And another swing and a miss. And Riker Evans has the Wasatch physical therapy strikeout. And that makes the score 5 to 4 after two runs on two hits. One air. Miller's gonna he's gonna take some grief going back in because that's it's like Riker's just throwing a wiffle ball out there. He's not reaching back and firing it with any any kind of overpowering stuff, <laughs> but it's enough to get Miller going down swinging. Only the second K in the game. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Wasatch trails five to four. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right. Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. 
So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit uccu.com and elevate your banking experience. KTMP, Heber City, and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Bob of the fourth brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch em all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. I'm going to say a questionable strike on that first one. God's going to swing at the second one and another error by Bullstock at third base. His second error in as many innings and Wasatch has the leadoff guy on. Yeah, I gave him the broadcaster's jinx and I talked about how good of a player he is. He's going to play very well at third base over there today, Tyler. A few balls that he should have handled pretty well. He's just not done a good job. But what he has done is he's run like crazy when he gets on the base pass. Tyler, that kick can move. He's got four stolen bases on the game already. Leadoff batter on. Brings up Blake Sweat. Wasatch executed a hit and run perfectly the last time Wasatch was in this situation. Good lead from Bukata first base. High leg kick delivers. Swung on and missed for strike one. Blake Sweat back out of the box. Takes a peek down at Coach Jacobson. A long series of signs. And we're back at it. 0-1 the count. Miller comes set. Delivers. It's going to be a bunt. Blake Sweat can't lay it down. And Bukato scamper back to the bag. 0-2 oh, now the count. Wasatch trailing 5-4. Gave up three in the third first and two in the fourth. Wasatch scored four in the bottom of the third, and that's where we stand right now in the bottom of the fourth. Nobody out, runner on first. 0-2 oh, the count here to Sweat. Miller sets. Delivers. Bukato's going to go. It's going to be a hit, another hit and run. It nearly hits Bukato in the face. He's going to round second. He's going to get on third base. Blake Sweat thinks about taking second base. A great job base running there. Nobody was on first. So Sweat was able to round that thing nicely. And another perfectly executed hit and run. And Wasatch has runners on first and third with nobody out. Yeah, Ty, he was thinking about taking second because Coach Jacobson saw that the right fielder was having a hard time getting to that ball. He's not playing straight up. Tyler, straight up is when the right fielder is playing directly behind the second base. So you're 90 feet off the baseline. This right fielder is only about 30 feet off the right field line. So he had a long ways to go to get to that ball, which it died. Coach Jacobson nearly sent Bukad, and Sweat was looking at that, getting ready to take the second base. Another base knock to the right center field gap by Evans. Sweat's going to go from first to third. Good job from the right fielder. Cuts it off, and Wasatch has back-to-back -back singles and ties this game up at 5-5. Five to five. Good hit by Evans. Isn't even going to give us enough time to uh, dissect what happened on that Blake Sweat hit, Tyler. So I'll just finish with this. Second baseman again. Not playing well when the runner's in motion on that sweat hit, right? That's a line drive that if the second baseman's staying where he's supposed to be, is going to be caught because the second baseman is where he should be. However, he goes over to cover the bag because Bukad's moving. Another stroke of genius from Coach Jacobson to put him in motion on that pitch. It leads to a Blake Sweat hit. And now we're in business, Tyler. 5-5, five, five, and we got a mound visit. We are going to have a pitching change. We'll take a break. Wasatch ties it up 5-5. Five to five. Runners on first and third. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. KTMP, Heber City, and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. 
Mirror Lake Station pitching change. Mirror Lake Station is your one-stop shop for gas, groceries, and goodies. Owners David and Kristen Wade have grown to love their Chevron family. And a pre-J Decker who will be on the mound for Orem. Miller will stay in the lineup as a pitcher DH now. He'll miss high and up for ball one to Baxter, who's had himself a great day. Singled up the middle in his first at bat on a nice barrel and then earned the walk that brought in a run. In his last at bat, Wasatch 5-5 five to five with runners on first and third. It'll be Fowler who comes in to speed up run for Evans. Decker delivers on the slide step. That one's in there for a strike. Moves count to 1-1. Decker seldom used here on the season, Tyler, for Orem. 1-0, though, on the year, three appearances. But to give a little comparison for him, Tyler, only 70 pitches now on the season for him. And uh, you compare that to a pitcher for Wasatch, that's that's someone like uh, Bridger Shaw level. That's how many pitches Bridger has on the season. Um, no, excuse me, Tyler, I was looking at the wrong, the wrong um, column there with that. But it's similar, right? It's a pitcher that's used maybe once every other week here for Orem, and it's just not someone that's used that often. One, two to count after a foul ball on the bottom of the count. Baxter into the box. Decker takes a long look at both base runners. Braxton, a good lead over at first base. Slide step delivery, high and outside for ball two. Two, two to count, good speed of both first and third for Wasatch. Grant Mahoney on deck, leads the team with 10 RBIs. Looking to get another RBI opportunity here. At I need to correct myself, Bridger's got 190 pitches on the year. Micah Dahl is about the same amount of pitches for Wasatch. Nice job there from Baxter. Beck Decker went with an off-speed pitch. Baxter traces it and will foul that one off. Keeps counted 2-2. Two to two. It looks to me like Orem's trying to give Wasatch a little bit of their own medicine, bringing in just a change of pace, a change of speed, and uh, seeing if they can get Wasatch off their timing. Goes with the fastball outside and gets Baxter swinging for strike three. That is strikeout number six on the game for the Orem Tigers. And that moves it to one away and will bring up Grant Mahoney, who's one for two with an RBI single in his last at bat. He singled through that 3-4 hole last time. Orem guarding the lines in their outfield, Tyler. You take a look in left field, about 30 feet off the line. Right field, about 30 feet off the line, which creates big gaps in the outfield. Let's see if Grant can hit one. He's going to go down the third base side, and once again, Bostock can't come up with it. And that's going to bring in the second RBI of the day for Mahoney. Can you give an air on that one too, Ty? Ty, I think I could, but I, I like Grant a little more than both stocks. So we're going to give Grant a hit on that one. Give, and go give Grant a single on the RBI, and that'll move it to runners on first and second. And Wasatch on the second run of the inning takes the lead back for Morham at 6-5. I'll explain a little more so it doesn't feel like I'm stat padding entirely here, Tyler. Both stocks went down to the knees to block that ball. It wasn't a routine play. But, uh, yeah, I think Grad's bat stays hot, Tyler. He's flirting with 400 now. 6-5 to score. Wasatch retakes lead here in the fourth. A bunt is laid down by Shaw that's going to go foul down the third base side. And we'll reset with one strike. Mike Adal on deck. Shaw, tough day so far. Had a good at bat in his last at bat. Ended up striking out looking. He's got a couple of Ks today. I like that move from Bridger, Tyler. Bostock's not had a good game over there at third base. He just made a, a ball, well, not an error, but a ball goes off his belly that definitely could have gotten them out of the inning with a double play had he fielded it. And instead, Bridger tries to go right back at him on a drag bunt, seeing if he can catch him off guard, maybe feeling sorry for himself a little bit. Good idea. One strike. This time it's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Flips it to the shortstop. Shortstop throws it to first. Four, six, three, double play. And Arm gets out of the inning. Two runs on three hits. One error in the inning for Morham, and one is left on base. Wasatch takes the lead six to five as we move into the fifth. Chad here from Mountain West Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. 
Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Queen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Queen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Top of the fifth action brought to you by Physical at the Pit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Pit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. The 2-0 pitch is going to be elevated to center field. Pushes Burdett back, and Burdett will make the play. That's a good barrel, but without wind blowing in, straight in from center field. Just kind of hung up there, and Wasatch has one away here in the top of the fifth. Ty Orem, we talked about on Friday that they play on a pretty small field. It's 360 to center, 320 down the lines, and the wind doesn't blow in on them, Tyler. Here at Wasatch, it's 385, you're 345 down the lines, and the wind usually blows up Provo Canyon. So even though Orem's a team that's got good pop, this is this is ideal. Putting Riker Evans on the mound and just inviting them to try to hit it far. You've seen multiple times they've just popped up and flown out to uh, your center fielder, Zach Burdett, just letting him run under those fly balls in that wide open outfield with the wind blowing in. What won the count here to the center fielder, Nix. He walked and flew out to the center fielder in his two at-bats today. One won the count with one away. That one's in there for a strike. Moves count to one, two. The wind is blowing in, Tyler, straight in from center field. So going to push that Riker Evans fastball from 65 to 66 right now and see if we can get a little <laughs> more velocity on that. But what it really is going to do is is you're just not going to have home run balls hit out going towards center field today. So any ball that's up there, Burdett's going to have a chance to try to chase down. That one's fouled off to the first base side. A little protection swing there from Nix. And we're back at it with a 1-2 count. One away, top of the fifth. That one hits the spot, but it's a little bit up or outside, and that'll move the count to 2-2. Two -two. Evans working out of the windup with a 6-5 lead. Goes back to the submarine. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number two for Evans. Strikeout number three for Wasatch. And there's two away. Ty Riker's probably going to give me a hard time that I'm kind of goofing off with his fastball. He's really not sitting in the 60s with the fastball. He's in the low 70s is where that fastball is sitting. But he is, he is mixing it up here where he's throwing a pitch that I'm not exactly sure how to describe. It's almost like he just decides I'm going to go wiffle ball mode on this one, and he'll throw it legitimately between 62 and 67 miles per hour, and he's really been able to baffle Orem and keep him off balance with that. Skin and that pitch. There it is yeah. right there, Tyler being fouled off. Right fielder Padita is back into the box, and he fouls off the first one. He is one for two. He singled up the middle in his first at bat, but he now falls down 0-2, grounded out to Carter Bucod in his last at bat. 0-2 the count two way. Wasatch looking for another goose egg inning with a 6-5 lead. Evans delivers the 0-2. That one's not going to be close. Moves count to 1-2. I can only imagine Coach Hermanson over there so frustrated, Tyler, watching this because what Wasatch is doing is they're exposing undisciplined hitters of Orem here today. His, his Orem should be able to just keep their hands back and their weight back and throw the bat at the ball no matter what the velocity is, especially when it's coming in a little bit slower. But Orem's just been a little too aggressive, getting way too big on their swings, Tyler. And it's outside of what we saw them do on Friday. They had really disciplined swings on Friday. And it will drive a coach crazy when you see your, your hitters get too big on their swings. 
After a couple of balls, he gets the outside corner for strike three. Three strikeouts out of the last four hitters, and Wasatch will take the 6-5 lead into our Guild Mortgage fifth inning stretch. Guild Mortgage, or Tom, excuse me, Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage has loan options to fit every situation from down payment assistance programs for first time home buyers to government sponsored programs for military families and rural residents or jumbo loans and high cost markets. Tom Stone and Guild Mortgage has it all. Ty, throw it over to you for our inning by inning recap as the Wasatch Was have the number one team. A little bit nervous with Ty. 6 they've, 5 lead. They've got them on the ropes. Forum still not out on the field, Tyler, after that strikeout. Heads down, slow walk coming out onto the field. And the Tigers do not look engaged in this game right now. It's a team that I think was sleepwalking into this one a little bit. They handled Wasatch easily on Friday and uh, jumped out to a 3-0 lead early on in this game, Tyler. And it's the number one team in the state against one of the, the bottom tier teams in the state according to the RPI. But Wasatch now in the late stages of this game has Orem on the ropes. Orem's only losses this year in opening season loss to Park City in 10 innings. That was a 10-8 loss, Tyler. And then they lost 5-2 to Desert Hills. They have won a couple close ones, Tyler. A 4-3 win over Brighton, a 14-12 a, uh, win over Alta, and a 5-4 win over Lehigh. But this is a different scenario for Orem in region play. Let me jump into the recap of this game, Tyler, because it's been a really interesting one. Wasatch started with Carter Bucod on the mound, and the first inning did not go well. Four walks and two errors led to three runs for Orem on only one hit in the first inning, and Orem took a 3-0 lead. Wasatch actually got a couple hits in the bottom of the first but couldn't push any across, and after one, it was 3-0. In the second, both teams went scoreless, and Riker Evans came in for Wasatch in relief on the mound. And into the third, Evans again held Orem scoreless. And heading into the bottom of the third, it was 3-0. And then the Wasatch bats exploded for four runs on the board. A ton of outstanding moments there. Tyler Grant Mahoney and RBI single crew. Baxter had a beautiful RBI um, walk that he worked to a, a deep count. Micah Dahl did the same thing. Wasatch jumped up 4-3. Orem responded quickly by getting two in the top of the fourth to take a 5-4 lead, but Wasatch punched right back with two in the bottom of the fourth and took a 6-5 lead and just put Orem down in order in the top of the fifth. And Wasatch leads 6-5 heading into the bottom of the fifth inning. It's Micah Dahl to lead off here in the bottom of the fifth. That inning by inning recap brought to you by the Gordon Law Group, your full service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. Ty, let's go ahead and give a shout out to some of the top performers brought to you by Bank of Utah. Ty, there's been a lot of standout players for Wasatch. Riker Evans has two hits on the day. Blake Sweat also with two hits and Grant Mahoney. So all three of those guys have been excellent in the box and they've all done it in different ways. Blake Sweat has really handled the ball well, or the bat, excuse me, well. Two hit and run. Uh, sequences for Blake Tyler has gotten Wasatch going. He's kind of had the big hit in those moments. But the guy that's delivering with runners on base is Grant Mahoney. Grant Mahoney, two for three on the day, Tyler. Two RBIs. And he's probably going to be the standout in the box because he's getting the hits when it matters. But Blake scored two runs. Carter Bucod has scored two runs. Um, Evans has an RBI on the day. So those are all guys that have really played well for Wasatch here today. But Mahoney going two for three today, Tyler. He's now pushed his batting average up to 404 on the season. He's been excellent. Mike Dahl earns the leadoff walk. That one, and it's going to bring up Zach Burdett. That one's going to bounce in front of the bag. So 1-0 the count is Decker having a little bit of hard time finding the zone. Those standout performers brought to you by Bank of Utah, who has accounts for everyone, from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender, member FDIC. Another ball moves the count to 2-0. Ty, this is beginning for Wasatch. If they can put a couple more runs on the board, just the attitude of Orem going out on the field after that fifth inning, I, I think you can really put them away here. If they can get a few runs on the board, you can kind of take the will out of this Tigers team. 2-0. That one gets the outside corner for strike one. Moves the count to 2-1. Burdett looking for a bun opportunity here with the leadoff guy on. Tyler stocking on the, in the on-deck circle. Decker comes set. Yeah, I didn't like that strike call, Tyler, and I just watched it on the replay. The catcher went out about eight inches to receive that ball and tried to bring it back inside. The umpire liked it, but just the way that was received, it looked like that ball was probably about five or six inches outside. Two on the count as Decker tries to pick off move over to first base for, is it for Dahl. 
Burdett's going to go ahead and square again. Can't lay the bunt down. This one will bounce behind him. So 2-2 two -two now to count. Nobody out. Dorius Dental offers no surprises in dental treatment. Dr. Dorius and Dr. Proctor love to make your mouth smile. Let Dorius Dental, or learn more at DoriusDental.com. Tie your keys to the game where, hey, throw strikes, play clean. Wasatch has been able to do that, especially Riker Evans on the mound. This is going to be a ground ball right back to the pitcher. Throws it to the shortstop on a one hop, but that is enough to get Burdett down the line safely. So a fielder's choice ground out from Burdett. He's to one out and brings up the number nine hitter, Kyron Stocky. He obviously would like to see Zach execute there, Tyler, and get the bunt down and get the runner over to second base. But trading some speed there on the base pass, getting Dahl off the base pass and getting Burdett in there, you might be able to swipe this back with a steal at some point in this at bat. Runner is going to go, swing and a miss. Burdett is in at second base safely. Pretty close play at second base, but Burdett is going to swipe the bag. Brought to you by Gravity Coalition. And Wasatch has a runner in scoring position with one away. Wasatch at the 6-5 lead here in the bottom of the fifth, trying to add on to it, trying to come away with the upset victory over the number one team in 5A. Decker, one look, delivers. That one's outside, moves down to 1-1. Yeah, Decker's missing his spot quite a bit, Ty. You can see on that one, Allen had to drag the leg all the way to the outside part of the left-handed batter's box to receive that. Kai Wesley warming up in the bullpen, Ty. Saw him on the basketball court. Yes, we did. Big, big, big right-hander. 2-1 the count with one away. Back up to the top of the order after Stocking. Stocking does have four RBIs on the season. Burdett, good speed at second base, has a decent lead. Nobody holding him on. The 2-1, swung on, just foul down the first base side. 2-2, two -two. now the count. Ty puts you on the spot halfway through the ball game. A good spot, a play of the game so far for Wasatch. Oh, Ty, there's so many moments, but to me, the turning point in the game was the Bostock double play. The ground ball to Carter Bucod, the Bridger Shaw, and turned it over to first base where Baxter made a nice pick. At that point, Orem was leading 3-0. He had a runner on first and second base with one out in the top of the second. And that moment changed the momentum of the game. Wasatch was able to get out of the inning without giving up any runs. And from that point, it's been pretty much all Wasatch. 3-2, the payoff pitch, misses outside, and Wasatch has runners on first and second with one out as they move back to the top of the order. Two card of Bacot, who's one for three, but does have two runs scored. He reached on an error by the third baseman, singled to left field in his second at bat. It's going to bring another trip to the mound from Coach Hermanson. Trips to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. Yeah, Ty, you can see Carl here has a plan. He was hoping that he could get Decker through the bottom part of that lineup, Tyler, with 7-8-9 uh, coming up for Wasatch. Wasatch able to get a couple runners on, and now the leadoff spot coming up. He's feeling like he needs to make a mound visit, and he'll probably have a pretty short leash for Decker at this point. It'll be Bukad Sweat with one out, and runners on first and second. Pretty good speed from both Burdett and Stocking. Ty Wasatch has eight hits on the day. Carter Bukad with one of those. It was a sharply hit line drive to left field. Riker Evans, two hits. Crew Baxter has a hit. Blake Sweat with two hits. Grant Mahoney with two hits on the day. They've been good in the box. They've out hit Orem eight to four in this game. And they lead six five. First baseman playing in front of the runner at first base. Off-speed pitch is going to be elevated to left center field. Should be an easy catch as that ball got up into the wind. Left fielder comes up, makes the grab. Both runners will advance back to first and second. It's two away. Boy, Carter Bacot doesn't hit a lot of fly balls, Tyler. That one he just missed. He's got a good disciplined swing. He tries to hit the ball on the line. He just missed that one. Had a good approach. It was in the right, or excuse me, the left center gap but floated up there too high, as you pointed out, in the wind. Easy out. Blake Sweat, two for three today with a couple of singles. On some executed hit and runs. He comes up with runners on first and second. It's that way again, and he's able to get the run in, the, or gets the, another base hit through the 3-4 hole. Burnett's going to try to score from second. He's in there safely. Stocking advances to third 
on the single from Blake Sweat. He's now three for four on the day. All those hits coming the opposite way, and Wasatch takes the 7-5 lead. Yeah, Blake doesn't want to allow Grant to have that player of the game, Tyler. How about that? Another clutch knock from Blake Sweat. He's figured something out going the other way in this game, not trying to do too much. And he's carrying Wasatch. So runners on the corners for Riker Evans, who as well is two for three today, but he's reached all three times. Wasatch with the two out RBI single from Blake Sweat has taken a 7-5 lead. That one misses outside, moves down to 1-0. Right fielder was playing really shallow there, but Burdett's speed's able to score. Give Wasatch that two-run lead. That one misses high, moves down to 2-0. Tie it is his little moments. That's something that went Wasatch's way, right? Having Burdett in the fielder's choice be able to trade spots with Dahl probably allows Zach to score on that play. I don't think Micah would have had the speed to score on that play compared to Burdett. 2-0 count is going to be elevated to left field into that wind jet stream. Left fielder settles underneath it, makes the grab, and that'll do it for the fifth inning. Wasatch scores one run on one hit, no errors. Two are left on base, 7-5 to five as we move into the sixth. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Top of the sixth inning brought to you by a good spa day, your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa. It's going to be 8 9 1 up for Orem. Van Buren, the last time he was up, doubled to the right center field gap. He'll take. Ball one, swing and foul this one off. Moves count to 1-1. One, one. No action in the bullpen from Wasatch. Actually, Blake Sweat was getting loose in between that last inning. 1-1 one, one the count here. Evans working out of the windup. Goes back to the submarine. Misses inside. Moves count to 2-1. I think one of the reasons Carl may be a little bit upset, Ty, is, is Evans hasn't been afraid to go inside, and his players are moving out of the way of these pitches that just aren't that hard of pitches. And the base runners trailing by two. Stick your arm out and uh, get on base. Swing and a miss. Moves count to 2-2. Two, two. Ty, this is a really fun game to watch, and it's about to get really interesting. This is going to be laced up the middle for a base knock. A nice two-strike hit there from Van Buren. He's two for three. Or excuse me, two for two on the day. Walked in his first at bat. And their leadoff guy is on base. And, and to finish my thought, the reason it's about getting interesting is I told you the third and fourth time through the lineup against a pitcher like Evans, usually teams are able to start timing up a little bit more. Well, this is the last batter the second time through the lineup. So Evans is about to face the lineup for a third time. Ideally, you want to get out of this inning one, two, three, Tyler, so you give yourself a little breathing room, a little extra space here when you get to the seventh inning. Guy on first. Nobody out. Brings up the number nine hitter, Allen. Allen's going to go ahead and swing away. Misses low and away for ball one. Wasatch hasn't gotten any action in the bullpen to this point. Tyler, been keeping our eye down there on that. Blake sweat through on Thursday last week, so he could come back, Tyler, but that's a little early of where you'd want to bring him back. 1-0 the count. Goes back to the submarine. Allen's going to lay down the bunt. Pushes Evans off the mound. Fields it cleanly. And throws it over to first base and makes the grab. That was a close one, though. That one nearly went into right field. Baxter makes the grab with the runner bearing on him. One away with the runner on second base. Second sacrifice bunt of the day for Allen. So with one away and a runner on second, we'll bring up Ingeman. Very similar to what we saw in the fourth inning as Van Buren doubled, a sack bunt, and then a triple from Ingeman brought in 
Van Buren. That's an interesting sacrifice bunt there, Tyler, from Coach Hermanson in that spot. But I think he likes his chances a third time through the lineup, trying to get out of a double play with your nine hitter up and give your one, two, three hitters a chance to get a little something going. Big lead from Van Buren, ball in the dirt, but Van Buren doesn't go, stays at second base on the ball one. Ingeman flew out to center field, walked and then tripled to right field and brought in a run. So one for two on the day, has reached base twice. Playing second base today. Evans comes set. 1-0 the count with the wind howling, and that one will get Ingeman. That'll go off his back. Runner will go back to second base. So the hit by pitch will put runners on first and second with one away. This is the seventh walk or hit by pitch in the game for Wasatch. That'll move us to the number two hitter, Kai Bird, shortstop. Walked, singled, grounded out to the shortstop. One for two on the day with the run scored. Dangerous part of the lineup. Two, three, four coming up with one away. <coughs> Burge into the box. He had six RBIs coming into the series and a couple of base hits. Evans comes set. Squares to bunt. That one misses low. And Christensen is going to come out and talk to Riker. Trip to the mound, this time brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Going to bring everybody in. His infield wants to talk it over with runners on first and second. Make sure we're on the same page with the Bun defense. I get curious. I'd like to talk to Coach Jacobson to see if this was a coach called timeout, Tyler, where you only get a certain amount of mound visits, but your catcher is allowed to wear an earpiece, and so the coaches can talk to him from the dugout. And I wonder if this is a way to save a mound visit and uh, have a conversation with your team without actually having to go out there, where the coach can talk to the catcher, tell him what to go say out there. I'm not sure that was the case in that scenario, but I, I'm sure that's happening at this point in high school baseball. Well, we're back at it. Runners on first and second. One out with the number two hitter up. It's the shortstop, Burge. 1-0 the count. Pickoff move, not in time. Runner will go back to the back. That's a pretty well coached team, Tyler. What Watts has tried to do is run a wheel route where you bring your shortstop in front of the runner at second base, and then he clears sprinting to third calling bunt. It was a good time for Watts to call it because Orem showed bunt with Burge on the pitch before that. And what you're hoping happens is the runner at second base will turn his eyes towards the shortstop who's sprinting towards third to cover on a bunt and that he'll extend that lead. Meanwhile, the second baseman is running over to second, and you actually have a pickoff play on, and you're trying to pick him off. However, the runner at the second base, Van Buren, knew all the way what was going on there. The 1-0 -oh is going to be laid down. Evans bobbles it. Burgess' speed is in time on the infield single, and the single loads the bases at 1-2. This is an interesting, they slid by the bag. This is an interesting conversation because he slid into first base and then came off the bag. Baxter touched him after he slid by it, but the umpire leaves him safe at first. So base is loaded, one out, tying run on second base. Yeah, with the three hitter coming up, Tyler. Second hit of the inning for Orem. Playing a little small ball is Coach Hermanson and has a tying run on second base. Bostock comes up, he's 0 for 2, but has reached base twice on an air by the third baseman and a walk. Get into a double play in his second at bat. That one's in there for a strike. Moves the count to 0-1. He's been a pretty heavy pole hitter today, Tyler. Everything's been over to that left side of the infield. If I'm Wasatch, I would probably shade him a little bit that way. Evans working out of the windup with one away. The pitch, oh, this one's gonna go at his head. Bostock ducks underneath it, would have brought in a run. Moves count to 1-1. One, one. One, one, like count, one away. Stocking playing deep and right, Tyler, guarding the line. The wind up, the pitch, goes back to the off speed, misses high again, that moves count to 2-1. Three, four, five, 17 RBIs for Bostock, 12 RBIs for Miller, 24 RBIs for Davies, are who are due up for the Tigers. Top of the six, Wasatch leading by two. Evans delivers. It's swung on, fouled straight back, and that'll move the count to 2-2. Two, two. That was a 
pretty well balanced swing there from both stock Tyler looks like he's he's trying to learn from his previous swings in this game that was more disciplined trying to stay inside the baseball two to the count Evans getting the sign from Christensen taking his time now wind up the 2-2 two -two. back to the submarine it's elevated just foul and we'll reset it 2-2 two -two. Another interesting component here, Tyler, looking on deck. Remember, Decker came in for Miller, and so it looks like... Pitcher DH. Oh, excuse me, pitcher, pitcher DH, DH, Tyler. So, so DH. they're not going to have to bring out Decker. No. All right, excuse me. No, just a pitcher DH situation there. 2-2 two -two the count. Evans back into the windup. Low, it's going to be a ground ball, and it gets through the 5-6 hole. One run will come in, another run will come in, and we've got ourselves a tie ball game at 7-7. Seven just a funny game, isn't it? That ball was not well hit. Just had ice skipping through the turf. Dahl was in and not able to cover that area. It's all of a sudden tied up at 7-7. Third hit of the inning here, and that will bring a trip out to the mound from Coach Jacobson. We'll take it. Wasatch 7, Orem 7. Top of the six action here on KTMP. Napa know how. <laughs> Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Trip to the Mount from Coach Jacobson brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. David and Kristen Wade have grown to love their Chevron family and appreciate your support. Swing and a miss here to Miller who struck out in his last at bat. He's 0 for 3 with a couple of pop outs and a strikeout. Comes up with runners on first and second. One out and the score tied at 7-7. Evans, one look, goes back to the submarine, elevates this one. Is it going to stay in play? Wind's going to blow that one into the lacrosse field. And that'll move count to 0-2. I'd like to see, you know, those golf trackers of where that ball started. Yeah. Looks like it might it be in play, didn't it? <laughs> that thing was outside the bullpen by the time it's done. What about Scotty Scheffler, Ty? Winning uh, quite a few tournaments this year, and he dominated the Masters again, second green jacket. That wasn't your pick, though, was it? It was. I had them on my, I had them on my called, fantasy called Masters right team. I did. You trade him in? I thought you said you were going with Spieth. Well, you pick four, and so he was my number one pick. And then I had um, Rom, who did not play well in the Masters. And, uh, yeah, Jordan Spieth was a no-show with the Masters. Didn't make the cut. One, two, the count, one away. Evans comes back set. Runners bouncing back and forth at first and second. The pitch outside, 2-2 two, two, now the count. Green jacket, where does that land on your trophies that you can win? Stanley Cup, World Series trophy. The, Seems a little more ball. useful than the other one, although they put you good have to use to the Stanley Cup. Don't, Tyler. You, don't you have to the leave the green jacket in the mat, like at the master, like at Augusta? I think you have to leave the green jacket. I don't think you get to take it. The 2 2 swung on and fouled at Coach Hermanson down the third base side. So many of those trophies, I mean, what do you do with them? You just put them on a shelf and never do anything with it. Blazer looks pretty good. Jacket. Yeah, go <laughs> wear that to the store or something. Going to get some milk. 2-2 <laughs> two, two the count, one away. After a couple foul balls here to Miller. Miller has one home run and six doubles coming into the series. That one misses. Christensen smothers it. Runners stay at first and second, and that fills up the count at 3-2. Interesting where Coach Jacobson decides to go if he decides to pull Evans. Started with Bukad, who threw an inning, and then Evans has come in and thrown the last five. One out, runners on first and second. 
Back to the submarine. It's elevated. This one will stay in play this time. Wind's blowing. Wind's blowing. Baxter makes the grab. Two away on the pop out in foul territory in front of the Wasatch dugout. That's a good play from Crew Tyler. He's had to make some tough plays at first base today. Dug a double play ball out of the turf. Had a couple that have pulled him off the bag that he's been able to catch with the runner coming into him and make a tag. And that one with the wind trying to blow that ball into the fence of the dugout. He's able to get over there by it, figure out a spot, and haul that out in. Davies had a two out, three RBI double yesterday in the first inning. He comes up with runners on first and second. 0 for 2 today with a walk. That one miss. Oh, no, that one gets the outside corner for strike one. 0-1, oh, one, the count. Yeah, and it was a double down the left field line, Tyler. Likes to get the bat head out, but he's kind of been all over today. He had a ground out earlier in the game to the second baseman, a little bit behind on Evans. It's that submarine pitch again. It's going to be foul. Baxter floating over into foul territory again, and will make the grab, and it's 7-7 seven to seven as we move into the bottom of the sixth. Attention painters and homeowners, premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore Paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore Paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit uccu.com and elevate your banking experience. Pingo Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. This is live coverage of Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bomb of the Six brought to you by Gravity Coalition, offering the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized sales, service, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. Seven to seven. Wasatch Orem all locked up as we are here in the bottom of the six. Crew Baxter will lead it off with Grant Mahoney and Bridger Shaw. Baxter's had himself a nice day at the plate. One for two with an RBI and a single up the middle. That one gets the inside corner. No. One, one. Now the count. Grant Mahoney on deck. Two, four, three with two RBIs. Now up to 11 RBIs on the season for the junior. Sophomore lefty sets, pitch is delivered, misses outside, moves the count to 2-1. Kai Wesley is ready to go. He was over in the bullpen last inning. We'll see if Watt Worm decides to go to him. Riker Evans getting loose in the bullpen for Wasatch. <laughs> Sorry, Ty. <laughs> Just keeping warm, I guess. You know, he's only, I mean, he's only throwing how many pitches. pitches. Got to stay loose. 2-2 <laughs> two -two the count, nobody out. Pitch, and that one nearly gets him, bounces just inside, and that'll move the count to full, 3-2. Is he at 90 pitches? Uh, he's getting up there, Tyler. Let me let me go check for you so I don't get it wrong over here. 84 pitches. 84 pitches. 
Should be able to get through the last one. The payoff pitch fouls off into the soccer field to the left-hand side, and we'll reset at 3-2. Pretty big announcement this week, Ty, that they told the players, according to sources, that the Phoenix Coyotes are moving to Utah next year. Do you rebrand or do you keep the Coyotes? Well, if you want to make money, you're going to rebrand, right? The 3-2 is fouled off down the first base side. That'll reset. So we've talked a lot about baseball team names. You got any good hockey names? For you can't go Avalanche. You love the Avalanche. I do like There's the already Avalanche. a hockey yeah, team named Avalanche. You can't I, do that. The, the one that's gaining traction is the uh, Yetis. The Yetis. Um, yeah, the Utah Yetis. I've seen that. Payoff pitch again. Misses high. And Crew backsburns his second walk of the day. And Wasatch once again has the leadoff guy on. And that'll bring up Grant Mahoney. Two for three. Two RBIs. Ty, I might argue, might be the best bunter on the team as well. I, I might argue it's a pinch run time for Baxter over there at first base, Ty, and then re-enter him. See what happens here on a ball with Mahoney. But Mahoney is one of your better extra base hitters, and you'd like to be able to score that run from first base. Well, such has executed the hit and run nicely, but Mahoney's going to square here. Tries to go down the first base side, fouls it off. One strike with nobody out. This is a tough spot for a coach to make a decision here, Tyler, because the bunt is probably the right move. But Grant's been your hottest hitter on the season, right? Hitting 404 on the year and can hit a gap. The coach is going to elect to try to go small ball, it looks like. Tough to hit a gap with the wind. Orem is playing very shallow. Pickoff move, not in time as Baxter is able to get back to the back. Type back to the hockey names real quick. Blizzard, I've seen that um, with Z's in there. I'm not okay. sure I'm a huge fan of that myself, but I've also seen the Utah Stag, um, the uh, the Trout, the Cutthroat Trout. Stabs at that one, misses it, and that'll move the count to 0-2. So nobody out, runner on first. Wasatch trying to get the leading run from first over to second. Wasatch has had success going the opposite way with it today. Nine hits coming into this bottom of the sixth. The 0-2 swung on, elevated to left center field. Center fielder will come underneath it, make the grab, one away. Pretty good swing on an 0-2 pitch there, Tyler, but that wind is just going to hold everything up in the air, make it easy for the outfielders to go run underneath. It's going to bring up Bridger Shaw, one away. Runner on first base represents the leading run with the score tied at 7-7. Bridger has one of the biggest hits on the season, maybe the biggest hit on the season, Tyler, in that game against Uinta where Wasatch came back and got the win here at home. Bridger hit a ball off the left field wall with the bases loaded to uh, help give Wasatch the win in that one late in the game. Check swing didn't go, so ball one here to Bridger, 0 for 3 today. So this is not unfamiliar territory for Bridger, right? Love to see him get another clutch hit, maybe get a ball down that left field line again that can get Baxter in. Left fielder is playing extremely shallow. That one's in there for a strike. Moves count to 1-1. One, one. Very shallow is Davies. Davies, that's right. Yeah, he's playing probably 50 out there. Not 150, 200. Pickoff move. Baxter had a good lead. Is able to get back in time. Moves, keeps the count at 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Davies is away. getting where he's playing there, Tyler, with that wind blowing in, is he's giving you the lead on a ball that gets over the head. When you're playing in a tie game here, if you play back and maybe give up the single, Wasatch is going to need to get a couple hits in a row to get that lead. Another elevated one to center field. That wind's going to keep that one up. Center fielder makes the grab. Two away. Bring up Micah Dahl. Struck out in his first at bat, but then walked in his last two at bats. And then Zach Burdett on deck. into the box right hand side again Baxter with a good lead over at first base the pitch that one's going to get away from the catcher and Baxter will move in to scoring position with two outs okay now this is where you pinch run here Tyler and I think coach Jacobson's going to go no he's not I thought he was calling timeout there Ty yeah he is going to call timeout we are going to get a pinch run so it'll be Jacob Bradshaw will come in to pinch run. A little bit more speed there at second base. Baxter will re-enter, I'm sure, at first. So now an RBI opportunity for Dahl. He's got three RBIs on the year. Came into today's game hitting 217, 0 for 1 with a couple of walks. 1-0 the count. Decker delivers. 
Goes to the off speed, a swing and a miss, and that moves the count to 1-1. One, one. Decker working out of the stretch, comes set, takes a look at Bradshaw, not a big lead at second base. Delivers the 1-1, one, one, goes back to that same pitch, that one's in there for a strike, moves the count to 1-2. Orem in the top of the seventh will have five, six, seven up. Wasatch currently at the number seven spot right now. The one, two. Bauer down the line. Bostock makes a good backhanded play at third base. Nice throw over to first. Bostock, who struggled at third base, makes the best play of the day right there on the 5 3 put out. No runs on, no hits, no errors, and one is left on base. It's a tie ball game as we move in to the seventh. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Chad here from Mountain West Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. To the action, Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the seventh brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch em all at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance, furniture and mattress. Six, seven, eight up for Orem. Notes were wrong. It's going to be Nix, Padita, and Van Buren. They've been good so far in the series. Nix, though, 0 for 2 today with a walk. Evans still out on the mound. He'll, he'll deliver a strike. Working out of the windup, 0-1. Nix walked, popped out in center fielder, and struck out in his last in his at-bats today. The 0-1 misses outside. 1-1 one, one, now the count. 1-1, one, one. Evans back into the windup, delivers. That one's going to bounce off the plate, moves count to 1-2. Fowler has come into the game at third base for Wasatch. Baxter did re-enter at first. It's a little defensive substitution there for Wasatch, giving them a little bit more range at third base. Back to that submarine pitch, it's going to be fisted. Evans has to come off the mound, makes the grab on the pop out. Wasatch has one away. He's throwing the dark one with that submarine tie. Like, Clint Kelson throwing BP would always throw. I, don't even, I still don't know what pitch it was, but nobody could get it. That submarine pitch is given Orem fits today. Yeah, they've been baffled by it, Tyler. That one coming in at 65 miles per hour is all. And they just have not been able to solve that mystery. Outside for ball one here to Padita. Single to center field, ground out to the shortstop, and a backwards K that ended the threat back in the fifth. 7-7 seven, seven this goal. Back to that submarine. It's going to be elevated to center field. Burdett settles underneath it. Two away. The Wasatch two away here in the top of the seventh. Wasatch will have 7-8-9 up. Is that right? 8-9-1. 8-9-1. Yeah, Burdett stocking and then up to the top of the order. It'll bring up Van Buren, who has been good today for, what, for uh, the Orem Tigers. Two for two with a walk. He doubled to the right center field gap and singled to center field with two strikes in his last at bat. Gets a little bit low, gets a strike call, 0-1, now the count. He got a going last inning for Orem, Tyler, when they were able to cut this deficit down. Has two runs scored, lets that one go, moves count to 1-1. Way, nobody on. The 1-1 one, one goes back to the submarine. This one's going to be elevated to center field. This one might get him. Burdett going back. Nope, that wins too strong. And a 1-2-3 inning. And Wasatch retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Wasatch needs one run to get the upset victory over Orem here in the bottom of the seventh. 
Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring, and if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Queen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Queen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson, NMLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Bottom of the seventh, we got a 7-7 tie ball game brought to you by Physical at the Pit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Pit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Give them a call at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. Pitching change here for the Orem Tigers. They're going to go to their center fielder, Landon Nix. Decker will go into center field from the mound as Nix is going to try to keep this thing at a 7-7 ball game and go into extra innings. Yeah, he's their closer, Tyler. He's their clutch guy. Two saves on the year. Has also one win, five appearances. So they like to use him late in games when they need a save. I already pointed out they haven't had a lot of chances for saves on the season. Worms have been getting a lot of wins out of their 12 wins, Tyler. Most of those, the save situation against Green Canyon, Tyler. He had a save over Alta, a save against Brighton and uh, against Lehigh, and he's been their guy in those situations. Burdett stalking, and then back to the top of the order to Bukad. Swing and a miss here to Burdett. Burdett 0 for 3 today, but was able to reach base a couple of times and scored and has a stolen base. 11 runs scored on the year for Burdett. The 0-1, make it 0-2 as that's a couple a, of swings and misses. That's a good breaking pitch right there, Tyler. Not exactly sure what that was. It looked like a slider, perhaps, but uh, a really good pitch with good movement. Wind up, the 0-2, and that one's at the belt. Four strike three, backwards K for Zag Burdett to lead off the inning. And that'll bring up the number nine hitter, Kyron Stocking, with Zakard Bukad on deck. Burdett and Bukad having a long conversation on deck there, Tyler. Zach trying to give Carter an idea of the pitches that he saw. The win the way it is, it's going to take some manufacturing because it's going to be tough to get some extra base hits. That one misses outside for ball one. Stocking 0 for 2, walked in his last at bat, grounded out to the shortstop, the bat before that. Another off speed pitch, little blooper, the shortstop will settle underneath it, make the grab, two away. Wasatch will have to do it with two outs, it'll be Bukad with Blake Sweat on deck. Bukad is one for four, has reached twice, and scored twice. Had a nice line drive down the left field line and tight. He can get another barrel with as shallow as Davies' is plan. Might be able to scoot that one by the left fielder. Uh, Davies is taking a step back. Now he's going to come in, Tyler, as I say that. But he's one been playing shallow all day. 1-0 the count, Nicks. The wind up, the pitch. 
off-speed pitch. Going to be a lazy ground ball to the second baseman. Fills it clean, throws it. And a 1-2 training for Orem as both teams trade jabs. And Wasatch and Orem are going into extras at 7-7 as we go into the top of the eighth. This is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned A-Stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Traeger, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in-store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your home. Around the block, what you need in stock is people who know how to help. See acehardware.com for details. Big O Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Six training action here at Wasatch High School. Leadoff guy will be the number nine hitter, Allen. He'll ground out to the shortstop, Carter Bucard, on a 6-3 putout. It's 7-7 as we go into the top of the eighth. One pitch, one away here in the eighth. Back to the top of the order now, Tyler. Fourth time through the lineup for Riker Evans. Let's see how he's able to handle the top of the lineup. And 94 pitches. Ingeman flew out, walked, tripled to the right field side, and then was hit by pitch and scored. Comes up to the plate. Stocking playing closer to that line on the right field side. That went in on the outside corner for strike one to Ingeman. Fifth at bat for the second baseman. going to miss. Going outside for ball one. One one now the count. Faller stays in the game at third base. Stocking still in right field. Burdett in center. And Blake Sweat in left field. The one one goes back to the submarine. That one too low. Keeps the count at two one. Moves the count to two one. Back over the top. That'll be a single through the 5-6 hole. And Orem has the leading run on first base. Ingeman with his second hit of the day. He's going to move us to the shortstop, Kai Burge. He's got two hits on the day as well. He's two for three, walked and scored. And grounded out to the shortstop. He reached base on his last one with an infield single. And that might do it for Evans. See what Coach Jacobson decides to go here. Evans. I think they're going to go to the second baseman. Bridger Shaw will come. I, I get this move. He's up in 98 pitches, and, and you've got now 2-3-4 coming up. But looking up and down this lineup, this, this is kind of an interesting spot because you look at the three and four hitters here against Riker. They've not been good, Tyler. Uh, out of uh, six at-bats, only one hit between those guys. And so Evans had them baffled a little bit. And uh, you bring in Davies into that mix as the five hitter, and all of a sudden they're one for nine. And so Evans has kind of controlled this part of the lineup. Had 12 pitches left to go, but Coach Jacobson going to go with the uh, change here. Pitching change brought to you by Dorius Dental, who offers no surprises of dental treatment with Dr. Dorius and Dr. Proctor. Let Dorius Dental make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriusDental.com. 7-7, seven, seven, one out. Runner on first base for Orem. With 2-3-4 coming up, it's Kai Burge, Merrick Bostock, and Owen Miller will be the next three hitters for the Orem Tigers. Faller will move, let's see, excuse me, Kyron Stocking will move into second base where he started. Crew Baxter is going to go to right field. Blake Sweat will stay in left field. Riker Evans will go back to first base. Who caught it short, and Braxton Faller at third base. So Kai Burge has reached three times today. He walked and scored in his first at bat. Single to right field on a bloop single. Grounded out to the shortstop and then a single on an inf on a bunt. 
Bridger working out of the stretch with the runner on first. Slide step, runner's gonna go. Throw from Christensen is in time, and Wasatch throws the runner out at second base, and Morum has, Wasatch has two away. Well, I can't believe, and, and I looked over to Coach Hermanson, and now I get it a little more. I couldn't believe he sent him on that pitch, and Coach Hermanson did not send him on that pitch, Tyler. He had his hands up like, what are you doing there? And so that was not a called steal from Coach Hermanson. Bridger's going to go back to working out of the windup. He gets a pop-up. Evans is going to call off the infield, and Wasatch gets out of the inning. One, two, three, and Wasatch has their second chance to score a run to win the ball game. It's still 7-7 seven, seven as we move into the bottom of the eighth. Napa know how. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Ross Sports. Napa know how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. A good spa day, play of the day, and I'm an A. A good spa day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa. I just want to talk a little bit more about that throw out at second base. Garrett Christensen with the perfect throw. You're throwing into the wind. You got Ingeman, who's your leadoff guy, who's got speed. And Kyron Stocking is in at third, second base, who is coming in from right field. And that's a tough play to make the catch and lay down the tag. Very, very good execution there from Wasatch. And they've given themselves once again a chance to push a run across the board, across the plate, to win this ball game. Well, this is the hottest part of your lineup coming up if you're Wasatch. Tyler Blake, Swit, Sweat, excuse me, three for four on the day. Riker Evans, two for three on the day. Excuse me, two for four on the day, Tyler. Baxter coming up after that, one for three. One for two, excuse me, as he's got two walks. And then Grant Mahoney after that has two hits on the day himself. So the next four hitters coming up for Wasatch have been very, very good. There's that off-speed pitch you mentioned, Ty. It's in there for a strike. Comes right back to it. In there for another strike. 0-2 the count here to Blake Sweat in the bottom of the eighth. Nix rolling right now on the mound. Retired the first three guys he faced. Misses it high and inside. Moves count to 1-2. Fielder, four, Warham now on the mound. That one's going to be elevated to left center field. That should get floated into the glove. Left fielder comes over, makes the play, one away. It's going to bring up Riker Evans, as you mentioned, Ty, two for four on the day. Has reached base three times, scored once, and has an RBI. Crew Baxter on deck. Evan single to the right center field gap in his third at bat. That brought in a run. He's going to swing at this first one, and Riker Evans continues to hit the ball well. That'll be a single, and it gets by the left fielder. Evans is going to try to link this one out to second base. The throw is not in time as the ball bounces out of the second baseman's glove, and Riker Evans is in and represents the winning run at second base. Tyler, you've been talking about it all game. Davies playing shallow, didn't have a normal angle to that ball from left field. Evans put it on a rope, but what should have been a routine single, now all of a sudden your left fielder's coming over at a 90 degree angle, and it gets by him, and Evans, aggressive out of the box, is able to dig it out and get into second base. Center fielder was the one that tracked it down, Tyler, and that's your backup center fielder as well. Decker going and turning, trying to make a throw just too hard, can't put it on the money, and Evans is able to leg it out going to be Colton Bassett who will come in as this pinch runner for Riker Evans. Give Wasatch a little bit more speed. Wasatch with a couple of chances to win this ball game with runner on second base. One away. 
Crew Baxter and Graham Mahoney, two of your hottest hitters. Baxter singled up the middle. Walk, struck out, walk. Mix, sets, working out of the stretch. Bassett, a decent lead at second base. The pitch, swing and a miss for strike one. That swing from Crew, pretty stiff, Tyler, but also a swing that would be hitting this ball to left field where Davies is extremely shallow. Anything over his head and this game is over. However, any single on the ground at him, you're not going to be able to score Bassett, Tyler. So he's taking away the single that would win the game if it's hit to left field. Baxter sets. Bassett not being held on. The pitch. That one misses low. 1-1 one, one the count. Mahoney on deck. Has a couple of RBIs already today. A single to right field should win this game, Tyler. Looking at the right field, they're very deep out there. Just about 20 to 30 feet inside the warning track. The 1-1. Swung on and missed. A nice off-speed pitch in the dirt on the inside. Moves count to 1-2. Baxter back in the box on the left-hand side with an RBI opportunity with the duck on the pond. Bassett takes his lead with the shortstop playing just inside of him on the second base side. Nix comes set. Three looks, delivers. Fastball outside, too far outside. Moves count, or keeps counting, moves the count to 2-2. Two -two. It's an interesting sequence, especially with the base open, Tyler, where you've got Baxter already at two strikes, you're gonna go after him. But if they happen to get crew out here, do you do you put Mahoney on automatically? I think you would, Tyler, to get a force around the diamond as his run wouldn't matter. The winning run standing on second base. The 2-2, it's going to be a ground ball to Bostock at third base. Fills it cleanly, throws it across the diamond in time. Two away with Graham Mahoney coming up to the plate. And, and I, think, I think the call here is to probably walk Graham, Tyler. I'm curious to see if Carl wants to let his pitcher go after him. Mahoney's two for four with two RBIs. One hit coming through the three, four hole, the other one coming. Mahoney into the box, they're gonna pitch to him. It's a two, it's a seven, seven tie. Big three, four hole over on the right hand side. Off speed pitch, misses high, moves count to 1 0. That, that's another option that Nix can go to, Tyler, is a non-intentional, intentional walk where you can see if Mahoney's going to chase something, give him a lot of tough pitches here off the plate, maybe a lot of breaking pitches, and see if he'll help you out. The 1-0 is swung on. It's the shallow right center field. This is a tough one. Ball coming in. Second baseman makes the grab, and that's three away. Zach Ingeman makes the great play over his shoulder as the second center fielder Falls into him, and Wasatch is retired. No runs on one hit, one air. One is left on base. More innings. We're going into the top of the ninth. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore Paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore Paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer a large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. And now to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Top of the ninth, extra innings brought to you by the Gordon Law Group, your full service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. It's 7-7. It's been a high scoring game 
until we got to the seventh tie, and both teams have done well at keeping each other, giving each other goose eggs. It's still Bridges Shaw on the mound. He's facing the best part of the lineup. 3-4-5 coming up for the Tigers. He's well, there for a strike here to Merrick Bostock. Bostock is so dangerous because if he gets on first anyway, you may as well just give him third base with his speed. He's got four stolen bases on the day today already. This is a must get to get him out. One for three on the day. Did reach on an air. Ropes this one. Foul down the third base side. 0-2. Oh, now the count. He might have scored on that one, Ty. <laughs> Going down that left field line. Single through the 5-6 hole that brought in two runs in his last at bat. Reached on an air in his first and grounded into a double play. The 0-2 gets him to swing at one out of the zone. Bridgershaw bobbles. Fills it clean. Throws it to first. Safe at first base as Bostock is able to get down the line. Bridger Shaw bobbles it for a moment and can't get it to first base in time. And the leadoff guy is on. Well, there's the speed, Tyler. Right back at the pitcher. A bobble. He got it up quickly and got it over to first base. Still not fast enough. Bring up Miller. Miller's had a rough day in the box. He's 0 for 4 with a K. He's going to lay down the bunt. It's a good one. And Christensen's going to get it just foul. Bosock was going to be on third base. He was already halfway to Baller third base. Needs to keep his head up, Tyler. That ball going over to first base. Braxton got caught watching, and Bosock was on his way to third. As soon as that ball's not at Braxton, he needs to get back over there to cover his back. See what Carl decides to keep Bun on or if he sends Bostock here. Wasatch did throw out Ingeman in the last inning that helped end a threat. No balls, one strike here to Miller, the number four hitter. Slide step, he goes back to the bunt, pulls back last minute, 1-1, one, one, now the count. This is a conservative approach from Coach Hermanson so far, Tyler, to go first two pitches on a bunt. I, I just think the wind blowing into the catcher's face with Bostock on first, I think this is a pretty easy bag to take. Sox not going to go. That one misses outside again. Keeps the count at 1 2. Instead Bassett is in at third and right field, Ty, and Baxter is back at first base. Just notice that. Sweat playing pretty deep out in the left. Burdett playing a little bit shallow in center. Shall step off the mound. 2 1 the count. Shaw sets. Pickoff move, had to dive back. A really good lead by Bostock over there. Gets back in time. Good lead, but a late reaction there, Tyler, on that pickoff move. 2-1 still to count. Shaw takes a peek, now comes set. Miller squares again. Another pickoff move, once again, not in time. and playing even with the bag at third base. The 2-1, it's a bun, it's up into the air. Christensen can't get to it as it goes off the backstop. 2-2, two -two, now the count. 2-2, two -two, still not bad pitch to run on here. 2-2, two -two, nobody out. Double play depth across the diamond now for Wasatch. Shaw delivers the 2-2, two -two. does he get the outside corner? Just outside, moves the count to 3-2. Full count to Miller, started on the mound, now DHing. The payoff, runner goes, is it a strike? No, it'll be ball four, that one's up in the zone. And now two batters are on base with nobody out. Now I think this is a certain bunt here, Tyler. Even though Davies is one of your better hitters, I think you're probably gonna ask him to lay one down. So runners on first and second. Nobody out. Davies, who leads the team with 24 RBIs coming into the series, has 27 now after the three RBI double that he had in game one. Fowler will play even with the bag at third base, but giving up that third base line. Sweat is playing deep and left. A base knock that way should score a run. Burdett playing shallow in center, and Bassett playing shallow in right. Baxter playing in front of the base runner here at first base. And Christensen's going to go out and give a talk again. Trip to the mounds are once again brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. 
Ty, this is probably a good visit. If you remember, in the game on Friday, Orem was picking pitches at second base, and they were doing it quickly. Bridger hasn't pitched with Garrett too often. They're probably just getting on the same page for the sequencing to try to keep Orem from signaling in the pitches. This is outside. Looked like Davies was going to swing it. First and second. Wasatch, a little bit of a pickoff move there. As Lukat was out of position. Yeah, they, they left him hanging out to dry, Tyler. They were running what looked like a pick play. Bukat was on the wheel route to third as that ball was delivered home. That ball's in play. Middle infield was wide open. Runner goes on 1 0. Christensen's throw down to third base. Not in time as Bosak slid by the bag. Luckily, he had control of the bag. So, runners on first and third now. A 2 0 count and the leading run on third base with nobody out. Expect Miller to be in motion here, Tyler, pretty soon after this. 2-0 count. Coach Hermanson may leave it off here on this one, Tyler. This is a good fastball count for Davies to get after. But after this pitch, you may see a steal put on the next pitch or two. 2-0. Does he get the outside corner? No, he doesn't. 3-0 now to count. Here to Davies with Landon Nix on deck. Davies 0 for 3. Walked and scored in his first at bat. The 3-0, that one's up, and that's the second walk, and now the bases are loaded. So an air walk, walk, and the bases are juiced here for the Tigers. He's going to bring up Landon Nix, the center fielder. He's 0 for 3 with a walk as well. Has flown out to the center fielder, the pitcher, and struck out. Wasatch is going to opt to bring the infield in. And Coach Jacobson is going to take a trip to the mound. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Ty, what are you talking to your infield here on this one? Well, Ty, you're just trying to calm him down a little bit. You got some nerves, a little shaky, right? Each player on base right now, not really earned their way on base. You got an error in a couple walks, so you just want to make sure everyone's engaged and locked into the game. Tyler, going to step in and know their situations. Need to get that lead runner at home above all else. Remind your catcher, find the bag. Step on that before you try to get a double play there if the ball's coming home. The tie ball game, we give a little Heber Appliance scoreboard update. There's nobody out here in the top of the ninth. Second extra inning. The leading run for him is on third base. But the bases are loaded. And, and what you also got to talk about is minimizing a little bit to give yourself a chance here in the bottom of the ninth. So Wasatch is going to bring the infield in with the Knicks. The now pitcher started in center field in the box. Shaw's opting to go from the windup. Steps off the back of the mound and asks for the sign to be delivered again. Shaw gets the sign, delivers out of the windup. It's a swing and a miss from Knicks for strike one. Nix has been up the middle for the most part here, Tyler, but elevated on all of his outs. Outfield will have the wind at their backs as they come in for a throw if need be to get the guys at home. 0-1 the count. Shaw's going to go out of the stretch. Slide step, delivers. Low, Christensen able to get the glove down, stops it, and moves count to 1-1. Good leads all around the diamond with Wasatch playing in. The pitch, that one misses as well. Christensen smothers it, keeps the count at 2-1. Moves count to 2-1. Nick's back in the box, 2-1. The wind still coming in from that center field. Slide step, it's going to be a square on the bunt. Christensen comes inside, makes the catch. Runner does pull back on the pitch inside, so that moves count to 3-1. Little safety squeeze action there from Orem. Yeah, and good that it was a safety squeeze because that was not a pitch that Nix was able to get down had it been a full-on squeeze play, Tyler. But Bostock had his head on the ball and head on the swivel, quickly retreated. He was kind of mirroring Fowler as Fowler was crashing on that from third base. The 3-1, that one's in there for a strike. Goes up the count at 3-2.
Three balls, two strikes to Nix. Richershaw comes set. Delivers the payoff. Swung on. It's going to be a foul ball down the third base side and will reset. The count still at three balls, two strikes. Nix yesterday, or on Friday, did have a couple of singles and scored a run. It's hitless today, but did earn a walk in his first at bat. The payoff again, swung on, and this one's fouled off again. Good at bat here from Nix. Good battle from Bridger Shaw. Yeah, Shaw doing a good job. Tyler got down 3-1, but not making it easy here for Nix. A couple strikes competing up there on the mound. Shaw comes set for the second payoff pitch, or third payoff pitch. This is going to be swung on again. It's going to be pushed foul. Bassett making a long run. Baxter did not see that one off the bat, Ty, and that's too bad. Baxter made a couple of pretty good plays over at first base, but he did not see that one off the bat. It's pretty cloudy. Yeah, and that, that's the only one who has a chance at that ball at first base, Tyler. That ball fell just a few feet outside of the dugout, right on the warning track by the fence. Too far for your second baseman to go who's playing in, and your right fielder had no chance of that ball. And, and to be honest, I, I think still Bostock scores on that one. Payoff again, swung on. This one's going to be elevated to the infield. Infield fly, batter is out. Wasatch gets the first out they need to try to get out of this thing. Yeah, that's the one you'd love to not have the infield fly rule there, Tyler, with the bases loaded. Let that hit and get yourself two or three outs there. Throw it home and third and second, out of the inning. That's why Wasatch that rule exists making, though, right? Wasatch making a quick adjustment to the infield. Tyler, they're going to bring Fowler over to second base, and they're going to play double play depth up the middle, and Kyron Stocking is going to go to third base <laughs> with Easton Padita up at the plate, who singled the center field in his last at bat, grounded out of the shortstop in one of his at bats today. One out, a double play gets Wasatch out of the inning. The pitch, it's going to be a bunt. He tries to go down the first base side foul. Carl Hermanson going a couple of squeeze plays here. That one goes foul. No balls, one strike. Yeah, a little chess game going on here, right? <clears throat> that if you move over a third baseman, you're almost inviting the other team to bunt it there. Tyler saying, well, we, we want this guy on third because we like this guy's glove at second a little bit more or something that's being signaled in there. And you try to lay a bunt down on stocking right away, but they were going towards first base, Tyler. The 0-1 goes with the off speed. That's in there for strike two. No balls, two strikes to Padita. Good pitch, good breaking pitch from Bridger. Now you got to make your best pitch here, 0-2. Ideally, you want a ground ball over here to Carter Bucod or Braxton Fowler. Get a double play. Gets him to swing and a miss. And that's going to be two outs. And a strikeout from Bridger Shaw. So Wasatch one out away from getting out of a bases loaded, no out jam. But it's going to bring up one of the best hitters today for Orem. He's two for three with a double and a single. It's Parker Van Buren, the first baseman. Wasatch goes back to playing regular depth all across the diamond. Bridger Shaw still working out of the stretch. Swings, fouls that one back to the backstop. No balls, one strike. Van Buren was ready to go there, Tyler. Timing was a little bit off, but that's when it looked like Bridger's going to have to get creative here, mixing in the breaking pitch with the fastball here on Van Buren. Two outs, everybody playing deep. Carl he has a lot of speed over at third base. See if he goes back to that squeeze a couple of times. Don't usually go to that with two outs. No balls, one strike. The pitch goes back to the off speed. Does he get the inside corner? No, ball one. It's a pretty good pitch, but the way Christensen caught that, I, I, it almost looked like he gave up on the pitch himself. Glove was going down as that breaking ball was going down, and it maybe just wasn't as close as it looked from our angle. The 1-1 one, one misses outside. Ball two, 2-1, two, now the count. Bridger asked for a new ball. So two balls, one strike, two outs here in the top of the ninth. Orem reached on an air walk, walk, had the bases loaded, nobody out, but Wasatch has battled. An infield fly and a strikeout or one out away from getting out of the jam. The 2-1, that one's in there for a strike. That ties it up at 2-2. That's a really good spot, Tyler. On a fastball count, Bridger comes inside and hits that inside part of the black. 
It's not the pitch you're looking for at 2-1, and you can see Van Buren letting it go all the way. The 2-2, Bridger delivers. Swung on, this one's roped to left field. Blake Sweat going back, going back, makes the grab, and Wasatch gets out of the bases loaded. Nobody out jam. And once again, they have a chance to win this ball game in the bottom of the ninth. No runs on no hits. One error, three are left on base. It's 7-7. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner, a local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit uccu.com and elevate your banking experience. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. We have our Good Spa Day play of the game. A Good Spa Day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a Good Spa Day to be your spa. And it happens in the top of the ninth inning where Orem is able to load up the bases with nobody out, and Bridger Shaw is able to work out of the jam. A fly out to the shortstop, a strikeout, and then a fly out to left field. Strands all three base runners for Orem on there, and a very clutch moment for Wasatch Baseball, and Bridger Shaw is gonna be your a good spot day play of the game. Well, bottom of the ninth, it'll be Bridger Shaw, Braxton Faller, and Zach Burdett. That will lead it off for Wasatch. Bridger 0 for 4 today. Braxton Fowler, it'll be his first at bat of the day as he's coming in for Mike Adal. And then Zach Burdett, who is 0 for 3, or excuse me, 0 for 4 today as well. No substitutions here for Orem. Same lineup. Wasatch is seen from Orem over the last three innings. Landon Nix has thrown two shutout innings. Got himself out of a bind as Wasatch had a runner on second base with one out, last inning, not able to produce a run. Bridger Shaw comes in, flew out to the center fielder in his last at bat. Center fielder now is KJ Decker. He did make the play, no, that was when Landon Nix was still in center field. Nix into the windup, delivers. This one's gonna be swung on to shallow, left center, right center field, but Ingeman will go back and make the great play from second base, one away. Engman showed some really good range at second base, Tyler. I've kind of beat him up a little bit on his coverage when runners are in motion, but he's really done a good job covering ground on those Bermuda Triangle type balls. Saved the game for Orem in the bottom of the eighth by making a really tough play, and that's a ball that easy could have fallen in, but he was in the right position pre-pitch and got a great read off the bat and is able to track that one down. Brings up freshman Braxton Faller. First at bat today for the freshman. Takes ball one and takes strike one. One one now to count. We're dead on deck with Kyron Stocking in the hole. The one one. Goes back to that off speed and that one's in there for strike two. One two now to count. One two, one away here in the bottom of the ninth. High ball game, tried to go upstairs. Faller lays off of it, ties up the count at 2-2. Kai Wesley back throwing again in the bullpen for Orem. Nix wind up to 2-2, goes back upstairs, misses, and that fills up the count at 3-2. Wasatch will be back on the road on Thursday down at Spanish Fork High School, and then we'll be playing at home on Friday. The follow all count payoff pitch outside and Braxton Fowler earns the walk and the winning run is on first base. Coach Hermanson not happy about that call. 
Barking at the umpire, and so now the winning run at first base, and he's going to come out and talk to his pitcher. Another trip to the mound by Mirror Lake Station, so it'll be Burdett stocking. And some decisions here from Coach Jacobson. Got to assume with Burdett's speed, you may think of a bunt here, try to get an infield single, get the runner in scoring position for a chance to win the game with stocking. Yeah, Ty, I think that's probably the play here, is you want to lay down a bunt. Zach's been able to get a hit off of a bunt, usually about 40 to 50% of the time. And although Bostock has been good in the second half of this game, he has had a shaky game over there at third base. And ask him to make another play, Tyler. If I'm Wasatch and Burdett, I'm going to try to get this bunt down and get that winning run in scoring position. You can talk to me, I can talk to you, Carl. Burdett back in. Carl back into the dugout. Got to hear a little conversation there between, yeah, between Blue and Coach Umpire Hermanson. and Hermanson. Yeah. One away. T winning run at first base for Wasatch with Zach Burdett in the box. Zach Burdett 0 for 4 today, but has reached twice and scored. Burdett's going to square for the drag bunt. That one is low and outside. Burdett pulls back for ball one. Well, and at this point, Tyler, five straight balls. I think you may go fake and take here until you get a strike. You know, square like you're going to bunt, maybe get that defense moving a little bit, get a pitch that maybe gets off target from uh, Nix and take second that way. He's struggling to throw a strike. 1-0, that one misses as well. That moves the count to 2-0. Burdett was still squaring. Both third baseman and first baseman are charging. Second baseman is covering first with the shortstop covering second base. Yeah, so it opens a lot of space in that infield tie. 2-0 the count. Burdett squares again. That one's high. 3-0 now the count. If you don't have to lay down a bunt, that would be better. 3-0 the count. One away. Nix comes set, delivers the 3-0, gets that one in there for a strike. 3-1, now the count. Think, still think I'd be incredibly selective here if I'm Zach, Tyler. I'd, I'd probably go around, and if it's a pitch I can handle, get that bunt down still, but be picky. The 3-1, this is low and outside, and Wasatch has the winning run now on second base for the second straight inning. Back-to-back -back walks are the fifth, fourth and fifth walks of the game for the Tigers. So we're going to bring up the number nine hitter, Kyron Stocking. He's 0 for 3 today with a walk. Carter Bukata, the leadoff hitter on deck. Got a good one going here. If you're just joining us, Wasatch 3 and 11 on the year. Has 12 and 2 Orem on the ropes here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Allen, the catcher, calls time to signal some defensive signs out to his infield. It's first and second for Coach Jacobson. With the wind blowing in, you might be tempted to go ahead and lay down a bunt. And outfield for Orem playing very shallow, trying to take away the base knock. Yeah, I kind of worked my way through that thought too, Todd, and I think you don't still because then you take Bukad out of it. And you want Bukad's bat to have a chance to win it if you can. A bunt here moving them over to second and third would almost certainly bring a walk to Bukad. But Sweat's been good today Sweat's too, Tyler. Three it's not hits a bad today. one to get to. 1 0 the count as Stocking did not square. Ball was outside for ball one. These two teams have mirrored each other over the last couple of innings. Wasatch loaded the bases, or Orem loaded the bases, but was not able to produce a run. Now with one out, runners on first and second. Shortstop creeping. There's the pitch. It swung on and fouled behind us. One ball, one strike. Even better, Tyler, is if Stocking just takes care of it himself right here. <clears throat> Ty, the way the outfield is playing, a single is going to be hard to win on. Right field is in. Probably you're looking at about 225 feet out is all, and that's pre-pitch. Left field is even closer than that, about 200 feet. To give you a little idea, the, the number in high school that they look for in the outfield on a ball and play to throw a guy out at home, 225 feet and in is usually when you have a chance, and these guys on a single would be coming into it. It's going to be really hard to score from second base with the position that Orm has on their outfield. Swing and a miss, moves the count to 1-2, the pitch. It's a ground ball to the shortstop. It's a double play opportunity. Shortstop to second base, second base to first base, and did they say safe at second base? Burdett looked like he was close to being safe at second base. Nope, he is called out. So runners on the corners, but now the winning run is at third base. 
I think they're going to put Carter Bucat on first, as you mentioned. So they're going to load the bases. So bases loaded, and that's going to bring up the junior, Blake Sweat, with the chance to win the ball game with two outs. Well, Orem had a chance with two outs, bases loaded. Now Wasatch has a chance with bases loaded and two outs. Ty, it's a real, it's a real credit to Carter Bucat, and I'll, I'll tip my cap to Coach Hermanson because I think – he knows this Wasatch team. He's got him scouted. Although Blake Sweat has been your best hitter today if you're Wasatch, your most clutch hitter for Wasatch over his career has been Carter Bucod. Bucod's the one you want up in this spot. He's my Mr. May, right? He's Mr. Clutch. And so Coach Hermanson knows that. The Carter plays at a different level when he has a chance to put the game away. And instead, he's going to take, take his chances with Blake. Two outs. Second baseman playing deep in the hole in that 3-4 spot where it's Blake has hit three times today. Gets a called strike one. Blake three for five with singles to the right side in all three. He's got one RBI. Trying to get the game winning RBI here. 0 oh, 1 the count. Fowler on third. The pitch. It's the off speed. It's in there for strike two. 0 oh, 2 the count to Blake Sweat. Big time pitches there from Nix who has struggled with command That's really in the ninth inning. Really good job from Nix on the mound, Tyler, because when you walk it full like that, your pitcher has no room for error. The 0-2 struck him out looking on three straight pitches, and we're moving into the 10th inning. Both teams load the bases and aren't able to produce a run, and it's 7-7 going into the 10th. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy Queen, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy Queen, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me at Guild Mortgage and let's put you in the game. Thompson on NMLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. NMLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Tenth inning brought to you by Bank of Utah, who has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit them at their friendly Heber branch at 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. Member FDIC. The number nine hitter, Allen, after a couple of sacrifice bunts and a ground out of the shortstop, he singles up the middle here in the top of the 10th. And for the second inning in a row, Orem has the leadoff guy on base. That's, that's huge for Orem, Tyler, because here's, I mean, you can bank on this here. Sacrifice bunt, and then you get two, three, four with a chance to knock in the go ahead run. They have moved Fowler back over to third base, Ty. Leadoff guy is going to be Zach Ingeman. Shaw comes set. There's a bunt. Can't lay it down. It'll go back into the backstop for one strike. Well, Ty, Ty, I'll tell you, whoever wants to execute is going to win this game. These guys have had plenty of chances. But get down a simple bunt multiple times. That's all it would have taken from a couple of these teams. Uh, get the ball in play with runners in scoring position, right? You can't strike out looking with, with runners in scoring position. Both these teams have not executed totally clean the way they need to. That one too high. Runner... Batter pulls back the bunt, moves the count to 1-1. If you're just joining us, top of the 10th, Wasatch, the number 21 team in the RPI, taking on the number 3 team in the RPI, and right now they are deadlocked at 7-7 as we are here in the top of the 10th. Runner on first base with nobody out for Orem. Another bunt attempt, and once again it's foul, and now we have a 1-2 count. See, and that, that's just what I mean by executing, Tyler. That's batter who's helping out the pitcher that ball's off the plate it's not a good ball to bunt he's down reaching dangerous play there and now at one two he's going to have to get it done at the plate which he has done today Tyler two out of three at the plate today 
Gives a speed up runner at first base. This one's going to be swung on. It's elevated to left field. This one's not going to be get to. This one's going to go off the wall. It's a double for Orem. Runner's going to try to score from first. He'll go into third base, so a double. And both runners will now be on second and third. And with nobody out, Orem once again has runners on second and third. Nobody out. Yeah, the runner on first had to hold up because of the wind, Tyler. That's a ball that's probably leaving the yard on a day without wind. But a lot of balls in the air have been caught, and so he was having to hold up. Wasatch got that ball in quickly. Sweat played that as well as you could off the fence. Bounced off the fence. He caught it with his bare hand and turned and fired it in and was able to minimize the damage. So second and third, nobody out. Wasatch was able to get out of a jam in the ninth, see if they can do it again. Swing and a miss here to Burge who popped out to the first baseman in his last at bat. He is two for four with a single to right field and a bunt single. Good speed from both Burge and Bostock who are up and on deck. Yeah, Ty, Good I think speed on the base pass as well. I'm thinking ahead, maybe going too far too fast, Tyler, but if you can somehow get this hitter out and Burge, get one out, I think you probably put Bostock on and load him up as Miller has not been good at the plate today for Orem. And so you maybe try to find a way to get him to fly out shallow or get into a double play. The 0-1 goes to the off-speed. It's a ground ball to Faller. Faller looks back to runner at third. Throws the ball over to first base in time. Nice play there from the freshman Faller on the 5-3 put out. Mossage has one away. So really a chess match situation here, Tyler. And I think Bostock, what he is, is he's dangerous in a number of ways. He's got a lot of power, but he can lay down a bunt at any time, Tyler. And it's, I think it's risky to pitch to him here. And Wasatch is going to um, put Bostock on. And so that will bring up Miller. Miller on the day is 0 for 4 with a walk. And now they're going to go ahead and He's move that. They're going to go double play depth up the middle. Go ahead and move Fowler over to second, stocking at third base. Ty, and Miller's not a great double play candidate. He's been fly out every out here today that he's made. Fly out to center and foul out to third base and first base. He's going to swing at this one. That one's going to go so foul. One of those hits that really nobody thinks cool, but his mom and his girlfriend. Way no, foul. his dugout was oohing and eyeing, but that's not, I mean, that's a, Poor swing, Tyler. He's out way too far in front of that one, and no chance of keeping that fair. No balls, one strike here to Miller. Trying to break the 7 7 tie. The pitch off the plate for ball one. One ball, one strike. That's a good pitch to come back with if you're Bridger. He's getting the bat head out too much. Dead pull on that first foul ball, so go soft and outside with the breaking pitch and see if you can't get him to roll one over. 1 1. Swung on, it's a hard ground ball to the shortstop. Bukad to Fowler, Fowler to first. Not in time, do they get him in time? They did, they caught it, Ty. Umpire late making the call, but there it is. The 6-4-3 double play, and Carl Hermanson is going to have a talk with the umpire. As it stands right now, Wasatch appears to have gotten out of the inning on the 6-4-3 double play. We'll go ahead and take a break. Wasatch 7, Orm 7 going into the bottom of the 10th. Why would you wander around a warehouse store looking for paint when you could just swing by your neighborhood Ace? In addition to Ace's award-winning service, we have top-rated paint brands. Plus, our color matching technology allows us to match any color. So stop wandering and start painting. Head to your neighborhood Ace today. Timberline Ace Hardware, serving the Heber Valley for over 50 years, is conveniently located at 737 South Main Street in the heart of Heber City. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Napa Know How Your local Napa Auto Parts Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment and many other items for heavy duty trucks, marine and farming equipment Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts 105 North Main Street in Heber City a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports Napa Know How 
Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Well, back-to-back -back innings. Orem had the bases loaded with one out and couldn't produce a run. So Wasatch is going to come back up into the plate with a 7-7 lead. And Riker Evans back into the box. So a big-time double play from Wasatch to end the top of the 10th to keep the score at 7-7. Nick still on the mound here for Orem. The score still is 7-7. Evans had a double last time against Nick's, but subbing Evans back into this game does burn Bassett for the rest of the game. So Bassett is going to be done. Bradshaw's done. He's pinched ran as well, right? Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss. Moves the count to 1-1. 3-4-5 up for the Wasp will be Evans, Baxter, and Mahoney. So probably if this game continues, what you're going to see is Baxter back into the outfield, and Evans will likely re-enter at first base. The 1-2 goes with the off speed. It's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop, Burge. Burge fills it cleanly, throws it across the diamond in time for the 6-3 put out. And Wasatch has one away. It's a good smooth play there from Burge, Tyler. I think he understood his situation. A slow hopper, multiple hops into you usually feel like you have to rush but knew he had Evans coming down the first baseline really gathered himself and just lobbed over a nice throw to first base to make the out Baxter 1-4-3 on the day today with a couple of walks no fouls off the first pitch no balls one strike I'd be worried a little bit about daylight Ty this game keeps I going I have that same <laughs> thought Ty although we're still a hour and a half or so away from where that should really be a problem, but the cloudy day sure makes it seem dark out here right now. A one as that one goes off the plate for ball one. One one the count. Always got to keep an eye on the catcher tie on a ball like that to see if they just collapse. <laughs> and I think he's going to be okay. That's, you know, for the <laughs> listeners that don't know what you're doing right now, you're taking a shot at me for uh, <laughs> a famous video I have of getting hit in the throat and then passing out as a catcher. 1-1, one, one, the off speed, off the plate to the outside. 2-1, now the count. Wasatch has gotten out of two. Bases loaded, less than two out jams. Foul ball moves count to 2-2. Two, two. Two, two, one away for the sophomore crew, Baxter. Had a good barrel in his first at bat right up the middle. Then that walked with the bases loaded for an RBI in his second at bat. The 2-2 misses way outside, and that will fill up the count at 3-2. No, or Nix out of the windup, delivers the payoff, goes with the off speed, hits the spot, but too far outside or up. Not sure where, and Baxter earns the walk, and then once again, Wasatch has the winning run on base. It's a pretty good pitch. He, it's has, good pitch. He, it's he hasn't liked that looping curveball on the outside part of the play for most of the game today. It's a hard one to resist if you're the hitter, especially in a full count. Baxter, though, has had a really good eye, Tyler, at the plate today. Third walk he's been able to work, and uh, going deep in the count each time. Grant Mahoney, two for five with a couple of RBIs. Check swing. That one gets away from the catcher. Oh, I think that check swing could have gone that in the questionable call. Could have gone Orem's way. Instead, it's going to go Wasatch's way. One ball, no strikes. Baxter does not advance on the ball in the dirt. 1 0 the count with one away. Back into the box. Bridges Shaw on deck. Nix working out of the stretch with Baxter on first. Come set. Pick off. Not in time. Good throw right on the back, but not in time. And we'll reset with the 1-0 count. Nix now comes set. Again, the score is 7-7 here in the bottom of the 10th. 1-0 the count, the pitch, swung on, fouled into the bullpen on the first base side. And that moves the count to 
Nix has been effective the last couple innings going inside on these Wasatch hitters. Wasatch has had success going the opposite way with most of their hits. Went back inside there. What makes his inside pitching so effective is his plus curveball too, Tyler. Curveball's his best pitch. Goes back to the fastball, fouled off again. That moves the count to 1-2. One, two. One, two, the count. Mahoney back into the box. Baxter takes a good lead over at first base. Nix takes one look, takes another. Now will come set. Long pause for Nix. The one, two. Goes back to the fastball, and it goes into the glove of the catcher for strike three. And there's two away here in the bottom of the tenth. Good job there from Allen. Hanging on to that one. That's going to bring up Bridger Shaw. 0 for 5 today in the box. Means he's due. He's due. That's a good, good way to put it. Wind still howling out there from center field into home. That's going to be a ground ball to the 5-6 hole. Burge fills it with the backhand. Plans, throws it across the diamond. It's not going to be in time. So an infield single there from Bridger Shaw. And the winning run is now on second base with two outs with the freshman, Braxton Fowler. Up to the plate. Yeah, good job, Bridger. Giving your team a chance here. See if Brax can come through. Follow Tyler on the season. Minimal opportunities. 17 plate appearances. Only two hits. So first and second. Again, the winning run at second base. Sophomore but crew Baxter on second base. Takes a good lead at second. The freshman Fowler in the box on the right-hand side. The pitch. This is low and inside. He walked in his first at bat and his pinch hit opportunity there for Micah Dahl. Actually entered the game for Dahl at third base. Walked in his last at bat. Might be wondering why coach is not pinch running for Baxter there at second base, Tyler. And, and the thought process here is you've already pinch ran for him once. So if you go again, Baxter cannot re-enter into the game, which if you can win it, Tyler, it's a risk that you can possibly take. And where Evans just re-entered this inning too and he'll probably be going back to first base. It's not a spot that's out of the question if you have someone else that you want to insert into the outfield. The 2-0, that one misses outside for ball three, a 3-0 count. That's gonna bring another couple of frustration calls from the Orem side. Pretty good pitch, but misses outside. 3-0 the count. Fowler into walk in his last at bat. It's gonna bring up senior Zach Burdett who's on deck. The 3-0 count here to Fowler. Nix comes set out of the stretch. Starting to sprinkle a little bit, and he misses high, and the bases are loaded on the walk. And now Zach Burdett with two outs well, let's has see. another opportunity to let's end this thing. can get the hit with the bases loaded, Tyler. Both teams now multiple chances in extra innings with the bases loaded in, in a couple different innings. Neither team has been able to push a run across. See Burdett Zach can get it done. Ground out to the third baseman. Reached on an air by the pitcher, Fielder's Choice. He ended up scoring on that Fielder's Choice. Ooh, that ball nearly got away from the catcher. Great job from Allen in knocking that one down. But Nix looks a little fatigued. That's five straight balls here from Nix. 1-0 the count here to Burdett. Baxter on third base represents the winning run. Nix working out of the stretch. The 1-0 gets the inside corner for strike one. 1-1 one, one the count. Shaw on second for Axton Fowler at first base. Their runs don't matter. That one gets the strike again. One, two, now the count here to Burdett. Nix comes back with back-to-back -back strikes. Tyron stocking on deck. Wasatch with the bases loaded, two outs. Trying to win the ball game. One, two, the count. The pitch. It's a ground ball to Coach Jacobson. Foul will reset at one, two. Nix goes back into the windup with a 1-2 count. The pitch goes back to the off speed and gets a swing and a miss for strike three. We're not done yet. We're going into the 11th. It's still 7-7. Seven seven. Wasatch and Orem deadlocked. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Carrying Community Coalition. 
Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. Attention painters and homeowners, Premium Kelly Moore Paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore Paints outlet. You can now get Premium Kelly Moore Paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore Paints. Stop by today. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. Bank of Utah has accounts for everyone from personal and business as well as checking and savings accounts. They've also got mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Hebrew branch at 620 West, 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender member, FDIC. Top of the 11th inning, 7-7, Wasatch Baseball still against Warham. If you just went in and finished Dune 2, Tyler, coming out of the theater, this game's still going on. Same game here, 11th inning. Ground ball on the first pitch is going to be a ground ball to Fowler. Fowler fills it cleanly, throws it across the diamond, one away. We're entering our fourth hour, I guess is a different way to say this. <laughs> Been a long game here, Wasatch. And Orem both have had chances here in extra innings and haven't been able to close the deal. Getting a lot of free baseball today. Yeah. You know what, Tyler? I like watching baseball, so I don't mind it. I wouldn't mind it. Your, your wife I wouldn't mind is a little a, unhappy a, with a it, right? A little Dairy Keen Ranch bacon cheeseburger <laughs> here while I watch the game. That, that would be nice. That was Davies who grounded out. I wish I hadn't said that. He just yeah, pulled me <laughs> over the edge. That sounds pretty good. It's going to bring up Landon Nix. So Wasatch able to get the leadoff guy out. They hadn't been able to do that the last couple of innings. They get it here, another ground ball, foul, or strike one to Nix. Oh, one one the count for Nix. Currently on the mound trying to help himself out. Goes back inside for ball one. One one the count. Slight sprinkle now coming down here at Wasatch. Wind still coming in from that center field. This one's going to be swung on, and this is roped down the line. This is going to be extra bases for Nix. He's rounding first. He'll get in for an easy double, and the leading run for Orem is on second base. First hit of the day there for Nix. And so now, once again, you said it, Ty, who's going to execute first? The last three innings, both teams have had chance with runners in scoring position without coming through with that needed hit. Orem has another opportunity here. It's going to be Padita who struck out in his last at bat. He's one for five with two strikeouts today. Did single in his first at bat right back up the middle. Crew Baxter has moved back out to right field and Riker Evans has re-entered at first base. Padita in the box with Van Buren on deck. Shot working out of the stretch with the duck on the pond. The pitch. That one misses low and outside. Christensen, a good job of smothering it. One ball, no strikes. Runner stays at second base. Shaw takes his time getting the sign from Christensen. Delivers the 1 0. That one low moves the count to 2 0. Orem was able to take the 3-0 lead on Wasatch back in the first. Wasatch answered with four runs in the third, followed by two runs from each team's in the fourth, one run from Wasatch in the fifth, and then two runs from Orem in the sixth, and then Wasatch and Orem have both gone scoreless in the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth innings as we stay at 11, 11 or excuse me, 7-7 seven, seven in the top of the 11th. 3-0 count now here to Padita. I think they're going to maybe save a pitch and just go ahead and put Padita on first base. So with one out, 
Have runners on first and second, put the double play back intact with the first baseman, Van Buren, who is two for five today. He had a double to the right center field gap and then a single up the middle. Might as well and he had a lot time. to say in his last at bat, Ty, after he got out. He and the Wasatch dugout were going back and forth quite a bit. The umpire actually had to separate them. He's going to swing at this one. It's elevated to center field. Zach Burdett taking steps in, makes the grab. And Wasatch now has two outs with runners on first and second. He's going to bring up the number nine hitter, Jack Allen, who did single up the middle in his last at bat. One for three on the day with two sacrifice bunts, a strikeout, and a ground out of the shortstop. Yeah, first pitch single, Tyler. Jumped on that first fastball that he saw. See how he wants to approach it here with the runner in scoring position. Always like jumping after that first fastball when he had runners in scoring position. This is outside for ball one. 1-0 one -oh the count. The Wasatch comes up in the bottom of the 11th. It'll be 9-1-2. It'll be stocking Bukad Sweat for the Wasatch. Wasatch trying to work themselves out of another jam. Back to back, bases loaded innings. Wasatch is able to get out of it. That one inside, 2-0 -oh the count. Angerman waiting on deck. Tyler absolutely ripped his ball the last time up. It would have been a home run on any other day. Wind is starting to die down a little bit, Ty. The flag out there in left field starting to come down a little bit. 3-0 the count now here to Allen. Shaw came in in the seventh. Has thrown three scoreless innings for Wasatch. The 3-0 to Allen. That one's in there for a strike. 3-1, now the count. Fowler guarding that line down the third base side. Evans playing off the line at first base. Outfield playing. Normal depth in the outfield. The 3-1, swung on and fouled off. Now the base runners will get a head start. So a 3-2 count with two outs. A base hit will for sure score a run here. Ridge Shaw back into the stretch. Gets the sign. The payoff. Swung on. This one's driven to deep right center field. Burdett going over and makes the grab. And Wasad gets out of the inning once again. And we go into the bottom of the 11th inning with the score still tied at 7-7. No runs on one hit. No errors. And two are left on base. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer a large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. I'm Walker Kessler, and I play basketball for a living. So I know how important it is to have the support of a team you can trust. That's why I love UCCU. UCCU is more than a credit union. They're a true financial partner. A local team of experts your entire family can trust at every step of your financial journey. Just visit UCCU.com and elevate your banking experience. Pigo Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Wasatch High School Sports is on the radio. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch them all here at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. Do we need to change seats? Maybe, you know, maybe we should <laughs> give the headset to Mr. Sean Mahoney over here. I mean, we need to switch something up. We got 
four scoreless innings. We need a run scored here. Yeah, we, we just need the <laughs> we just need the big rally hit, Tyler. We need someone to come up clutch in that big moment. Nine one two up here for Wasatch. It's seven seven. If you're just joining us, we're in the bottom of the eleventh. Wasatch is on a six game losing streak. They're taking on the number three team in five A, Orem, who's twelve and two on the year. Only two losses on the year for Orem. They beat Wasatch ten to one on Friday. And Wasatch has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Tigers today. It's a 7-7 ball game. Wasatch has worked themselves out of three straight, straight jams. But Orem as well has gotten out of two straight bases loaded jams. Plenty of guys on base to score. Nobody wants to touch home plate. It's going to be Kyron Stocking to lead it off for Wasatch. That will miss low. Ball one. That's how you mentioned Matt Mahoney and Tate Shaw over here running the scoreboard doing the PA. Got a couple great trivia questions we can do with those guys here in the future. I just want to tease that. It's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Ingman fields it cleanly, throws it to first, one away. So back up to the top of the order with one away. It's going to be Carter Bucod, Blake Swed, and Riker Evans. In fact, I may I may uh, just throw one out to you right now with uh, Tate Shaw over here. He's a Montana boy and uh, played football up in his high school. And uh, his high school has a very famous draft pick that came from their high school, Tyler. One might argue the biggest bust in NFL I history. I knew this before you said biggest bust, Ty, so you, you ruined it because now I think that's pretty obvious. <laughs> but I, I had Zach it. Zach Wilson, had it is that what you were going to say? <laughs> yeah. Marcus Russell? No, it's neither of those two. No balls, one strike. A big swing and a miss there from Carter, and that will move count to 0-2. Well, you got to give us the answer if you Ryan know it Leaf. now. Ryan Leaf, Tyler. He's got a really interesting story, Ryan Leaf does. No balls, two strikes. And that one's in there for strike three. Got him looking on the fastball. Looked like he was looking for something else there. And Wasatch has two batters retired here in the bottom of the 11th. Well, Blake Sweat's going to come up now. Strikeout looking in his last at bat. Does have three hits on the day today, including an RBI. Swings to the first one. That'll be fouled off for strike one. Ryan Leaf played basketball with a former Utah college coach. Ty, do you know who that might be? Swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt here from Blake Sweat. 0-2 oh, now played the count. basketball? Played basketball in high school coach. with a former college, like a college in Utah basketball. That's Ryan Leaf, you say? Yep. Ooh, Ty, I don't know. You're going to have stump oh, me on the that count. one. Pitch swung on, and that's going to be a single into the outfield. So Wasatch keeps their hopes alive here in the bottom of the 11th with a two-out single from Blake Sweat, his fourth single on the day. And that will bring up Riker Evans, who has three hits as well on the day. I like the one uh, for Matt Mahoney. i got to do the trivia for him now. He can't answer because he's going to know this, Tyler, but this is, this is a fantastic one. 1997, right, Matt? That's when you graduated. So this is a good one, Tyler. Beat out two incredible athletes for uh, Athlete of the Year at Wasatch. Riker Evans is going to foul this one off. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you can name both of them here, Tyler. Both in their various sports had uh, incredibly successful careers after high school. So uh, who are the two Wasatch athletes that... Mr. Matt Mahoney beat out in 1997 for player of the year. A one ground ball to the shortstop. Burge fills it cleanly, throws it across the diamond. Guess what? We're going to go into the 12th as no runs are scored on one hit, no errors. One is left on base. Top of the 12th, 7-7 the score. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Chad here from Mountain West Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. 
With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Into the 12th inning we go here at Wasatch High School. Wasatch and Orem all tied up 7-7. Seven to seven. 12th inning action brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation spe specialist dedicated to your total recovery from injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Ty got cut off before you could answer the trivia question. 1997 Male Athlete of the Year, Matt Mahoney. Who did he beat out? Yeah, Kel Sanderson. the Sanders best athletes to come through Wasatch. And uh, Jake Probst. Well, the first pitch is going to hit Ingman. And so, once again, Orm has the leadoff guy on base. This is right where Wasatch wants him. It's the guy <laughs> on base. That's what I was thinking last inning. Let's just put two guys on to start, and then Bridger <laughs> can really go to work. He's been good with runners on base. Well, Made it hard on himself. Pretty, pretty dangerous every spot here. here. It's going to be Kai Burge and Merrick Bostock, two of the fastest guys on the team. Burge on the game today, two for six, with a single to right field and a bunt single. Squares to bunt, and that'll be missed for ball you one. You said so casually, Kale yeah. Sanderson and Jake, Jake Probst, like it was no big deal. Yeah, right? like, yeah, just no big arguably, deal. Arguably, well, you might sure need to Kale. tell the listeners about Jake because they may not be Fresno familiar State with his career starter, at Fresno right? State tie hits. Pretty sure all conference by the time he graduated. Now there's square to bunt out and misses outside. 2-0 oh, the count. Kale, I guess he had an okay career as well outside of high school. Had a decent run at it, 159-0 at Iowa State, four national titles. That's that's all right. That's all right. What's better? It's almost blasphemous to say, Tyler, but college wrestling career, college coaching career for yeah. Kale. He's been so good at Penn yeah. State coaching. That, that, that is a good question. I'd be interested to hear what the wrestling. It has to be his college career have. because that's probably the Nobody best athletic performance yeah. anyone's ever had. But it's, I guess, just a nod to how good of a job he's doing coaching over there at Penn State. 3-0 to count. Squares to bunt again. That one is in there for a strike. So 3-1 to count here to Birch. The 3-1. He squares to bunt again. This one's going to be down. Shaw fills it cleanly. Throws it to first base in time. Nobody was on third base. Faller, as you said, Ty, kind of got caught watching. A good play there from Shaw. The runner will stay at second base. Although Coach Hermanson was hoping to get his runner over to third. So, leading run is now at second base. Here in the top of the 12th inning with one out. It's going to be 3-4-5 with the opportunity to break the tie. Yeah, Ty, I think Carter Bucod probably saved third base there. He looked up and recognized that Fowler wasn't back. And, and Braxton recognized it, Tyler. He was on the sprint back, but it was, it was a little late. And Bucod recognized it before Engeman did at second base. And so Bukad was on a sprint about 15 feet in front of Engelman, and that held him there, even though no one was covering third base. So good job from Carter. Misses here to Bostock. Bostock on the game today is one for four with a couple of walks. Swings at this one, and that'll be fouled off. Moves the count to 1-1. One, one. One one the count, one away with the runner on second base. Seven seven the score. The pitch swung on and missed. Moves count to one two. One two the count, one away. Both stock back into the box on the right hand side. Shaw taking his time. Takes a peek, delivers the one, two, goes low and outside. Four, ball two, two, two the count. It was a good secondary there from Ingeman, but he'll go back to the bag with the count tied at two, two. Yeah. 
Outfield playing a little bit shallow. The wind has died down tight. Look at that flag out in left field. No wind right now. The 2-2, that one misses as well. Ingeman has started to go for third base. Now he'll scamper back to the bag. Full count, three balls, two strikes. That arm for Bridger looking a little tired to me, Tyler, and understandably he's pitched every single one of these extra innings for Wasatch. We're into the 12th inning, 60 Seven pitches now on the game for Bridger. Longest outing of the game of the season so far for Bridger. The payoff goes back in. It's going to be a base knock through the three-four hole. This is going to give Orem the lead. Baxter's throw is not in time. Bostock stays at first base, and it's an eight-seven lead here in the top of the twelve for the Orem Tigers. Evans did everything he could to get to that ball, Tyler ranged over probably about 40 feet and dove had he been able to knock that down and keep him in front. Bostock's still going to get a hit on that, but that run wouldn't have scored on that hit at least. He did everything he could, but couldn't keep it in front in the infield. So Oren breaks the tie. It's 8-7 to seven here in the 12. Bostock's going to go on the first pitch, fouls it off. <laughs> Coach Hermanson. He's got to be beside <laughs> himself, right? I mean, what are you doing? Oh. That kid's got second base swiped, and Miller took it away from him. No balls, one strike with one away. Miller is hitless today. 0 yeah, for 5 on the day for Miller. Take a look at his spray chart, Tyler. He grounded into that critical double play with the bases loaded in extra innings a couple innings ago. And uh, it ended the threat for Orem. A one pickoff move. Bostock able to dive back in time and will reset at the 0-1 count. Then he's fouled out to first, fouled out to third. Flew out to center and then had a strikeout. So not a great day here for Miller so far. Runner is going to go. Pitch is in there for a strike. Did he get him? Oh, he got him. Bostock is not happy about it. No, and he shouldn't be, Tyler. They tagged him on the butt. I mean, his arms are in there. But it was a good enough throw. Carter got a good tag down. But I think if you look at that on the replay, I don't know how you can tag a guy that far back and have that be an out. Good quick tag from God, though. Oh, to the count here. To Miller, that one goes high and inside, ball one. One, two. Regardless, Wasatch is going to have some work to do. Down, eight, seven. One, two, the count, two outs. Bridger working back out of the windup. Goes to the off speed and gets the swing and a miss. So one run comes in, and so it's going to give Wasatch a challenge here. Down, eight, seven. We go into the bottom of the 12th. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot. Or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. <laughs> Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bottom of the 12th brought to you by Physical at the Pit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Pit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Call Physical at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance 
and regain your freedom. It's 8-7. to seven. Orem finally able to push a run across there in the top of the 12th. Wasatch has to score at least one to extend it and two to win it. It'll be Crew Baxter who will take ball one. Baxter on the game today. One hit. He's 1-4-3 with three walks. Grant Mahoney on deck with a couple of hits. One over the count. Sophomore steps into the box on the left-hand side. The pitch. Ah, swing and a miss on a pitch. Probably a little bit out of the zone. One-one now the count. Next into the windup, delivers the one-one, goes back to that off speed. A little inside. A little Tyler. inside. Moves count to two-one. Outfield still playing shallow as the wind is picked back up again in the outfield. Swing and a miss on the outside part of the plate. 2-2 now to count. Baxter, Mahoney, Shaw will be the three to lead it off here in the bottom of the 12th. Wasatch down 8-7. Nix takes his time. Now delivers the 2-2. Goes back to that off speed. It'll be fouled off to the third baseman. And we'll reset it with count 2-2. Two, two. Back into the windup, delivers, goes back to the off speed, freezes Baxter, and that'll be strikeout looking. That's the fourth strikeout now for Knicks. Oh, excuse me, that's going to be the fifth strikeout for Nick's third one looking. Good breaking ball. Nick's up to 78 pitches on the day himself. He's a guy that normally is used in a closer role. Five appearances. And uh, has one win and two saves on the season. Trying to get a second win here. He's going to bring up Mahoney. Swing and a miss for strike one. Richard Shaw on deck. Mahoney, two, four, six with a couple of RBIs. Orm started the game with Miller on the mound, Tyler, BYU commit, and Wasatch really got to him, chased him out in the fourth inning. And uh, they hit 368 against Miller today in their opportunities against him, Tyler, scored, uh, let's see here, how many runs, five runs when he went out of the game? Six runs, excuse me. Swing and a miss, moves the count to 1-2 here for Mahoney. Takes his time to get back into the box. Nix delivers the one two. Does he get the outside corner? No, he doesn't. And that'll move the count to two two. Yeah, he wanted it though, Tyler. Looked like he hit the spot just how he wanted. A little too far out. Two two to count. Back into the windup. Delivers the two two. Gets him to chase at one in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher. Catcher fills it though. Throws it down the first. Two away. Well, Wasatch is down to their final out here, and it's going to be Bridger Shaw. Single, had an infield single to the shortstop in his last at bat. He's one for seven, one for six on the game today. Shaw and then Micah Dahl will be re-entering for Braxton Faller if Wasatch can extend this thing. Thanks. Steps off the mound. Might be a little sick, Ty. What's that? Kind of held his stomach a little bit, like he was a little bit sick. Who's that, Nix? Nix, yeah. I was actually looking over at Dahl after you said that, so I missed that, Tyler. Stepped off the step back of the mound and kind of put his hand on his stomach. and You're going to throw up. Get off the turf. <laughs> back into the windup is Nix. First pitch, check swing, strike one here to Shaw. won the count. It was a hit by pitch, a sacrifice, and then a single for Orem that gave them the 8-7 lead. Goes back to the off speed, and this is outside. 1-1 one, one, now the count. The 
the 1-1. Swung on, elevated to right center field. Center fielder Decker comes up, makes the play, and Orem is tested and comes away with the victory, 8-7. to seven. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with a quick Timberline Ace Hardware postgame show right after this. Attention all sideliners. Economists and investors have said recently, if you are saving money and waiting to buy, I'd reconsider even at current interest rates. Reports have shown that the masses move or not move based on the behavior of interest rates. This is sidelining in our current environment. With most people using this information as their playbook, it leaves everyone doing the same thing at the same time, resulting in a basic but serious future crisis of supply and demand. So, come see me, Guild Mortgage, and let's put you in the game. Thompson MLS 257849. Good mortgage company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned Ace stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Traeger, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your home. Around the block, what you need in stock is people who know how to help. See acehardware.com for details. KTMP, Heber City, and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. It's time for the Timberline Ace Hardware Post Game Show. As your locally owned Ace Hardware, we are committed to being the helpful place by offering our customers personal service, quality products, and a convenient shopping experience from local experts who know you best. That's Timberline Ace Hardware. We're going to make this one quick, Ty, because this one was a marathon, and ultimately Wasatch not able to pull off what would have been a great upset today. Yeah, we're just shy of four hours on the air here today for this game here, Tyler. So I, I think we've heard enough from us, and so we'll just hit some of the high spots and highlight moments in this one. Wasatch played really well. It's tough that they didn't end up getting this win here, Tyler. They fell down 3-0 early on in this game against Orem, but they were able to battle their way back. They took a 4-3 lead in the third inning. Orem punched right back and took a 5-4 lead in the top of the fourth, but Wasatch came right back at them, scoring two in the bottom of the fourth making it 6-5, to five. and then in the 5th, Wasatch scored one more, making it 7-5. to five. In the 6th, Orem was able to come up with a clutch knock to get two RBIs in and tie it up 7-7 seven to seven and set up what would be the longest game that you and I can remember in Wasatch High School baseball history. I haven't been around it for about 20 years, Tyler, between you and I. Don't think we've had a game goal this far before. 12 innings ultimately is what they end up going. The 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th inning all go scoreless for both teams. And that's not for lack of opportunity. Both teams had multiple innings with the bases loaded and came up empty. But the play that defined the game, Tyler, and uh, your a good spa day moment of the game that really made the difference was Bostock getting that RBI single in the top of the 12th to push across the game-winning run. And uh, that was the defining moment. Orm was able to get the 8-7 win after retiring the side in the bottom of the 12th inning. And Wasatch Falls, 8-7. That was a good spot, a defining moment. Ty, just give a couple of shout-outs to some highlight performers. Brought to you by Bank of Utah. Ty, Wasatch had 12 hits on the day. And there's several guys that really stood out. Blake Sweat was awesome. Four hits for the Was in his uh, plate appearances. Had seven official at-bats on the day. Four hits, all singles. He's had one RBI and two runs scored. Also excellent in the box was Riker Evans on the day, three for seven in his plate appearances, two singles and a double along with an RBI. And Grant Mahoney had two hits on the day himself, a couple singles and two RBIs. Those are a few of your standout players. And how about Bridger Shaw in relief, Tyler? Came in in the seventh inning and was able to hold Orm scoreless until the 12th, gave up one run. Um, out of all five of those relief innings pitched. He really did a good job, worked out of several jams, but ultimately Orem got the one hit that Wasatch couldn't, and uh, that's why this game got away from him. Wasatch falls 8-7. to seven. They'll fall to 3-12 and 12 on the year. They're back on the road on Thursday at Spanish Fork. We'll have all the action for you here. Uh, 94-5 the peak. That'll be a 3-30 start. Wasatch falls 8-7. <laughs> 